27th of January, 2013, we're going to do, um, oh, I should have made a joke about forgetting Don't how to do the intro. Fuck it. It's, of... um, That's uh, it. Episode uh, cancelled. <laughs> it's Amnesia <laughs> with Adam. Just reset, just be done. Fuck. God damn it. This is really bad. Adam. Yes. Right. Speak louder, I can't, I can't hear you. You can't hear me, okay. Bad. Hi, is this any be- <sighs> bit better? Uh, come on, man, this is fucking awful, Adam. What are you doing? I'm not trying. Okay, weebles. Okay, weebles. there we go. Oh, oh, this? oh, oh shit. Wow. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, and Mr. Weebles. Uh, weebles, say hello. Hello. Um, as usual, there is BJ. Hello. Um, Feasel. Hi. Uh, Duckfist. Hey. And me, uh, here for my last show, because they're going to get somebody need to do the intros. Because uh, apparently I suck. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's... Wait, what do we do now? Oh, it's the introduction. Shit. Ah, oh, fuck. This is so hard, man. All right. It was the introduction. Um, it's hard, man. We have to do... <laughs> he already exists. Hard man already exists. Yeah. Right. Recaps. That's what we do, man. I cut it, dude. I'm so good at this. We got it. Good we job. recap our oh, week, oh, and we I start with PJ. Wait, wait, wait. Where's the split for that? In, in, okay. Recap good. is a part of intro, so... Okay, right. Cool. PJ. Right, so we got to... Um, Yeah. So I did a whole bunch of super ghouls and ghost attempts earlier in the week, and was actually making really good progress. I made it to stage five like seven or eight times, I think, mm. which was really good. And then during one of those streams, Pasky was in there and said, hey, you should play Actraiser 2. And I totally fell for the trap because now I'm hooked on it and, and like completely abandoned super ghouls and ghosts. Has that ever been and, a trap? That's not a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. The game is like crack. Here, play this bad game. Oh, wait, shit. Whoa, okay. Whoa, whoa. You like bad lag, game. don't you? I've seen you play stage one of this game a thousand times. You'll love Actraiser. Actraiser 2 is so good. <laughs> it's not a bad game at all. Oh. So, anyways, I've been playing that like every day for way longer than I should ever, ever play anything. And uh, it's like the best game ever. So, I'm going to be playing that for a really, really long time. All right, Feezy Fees. Sounds very sincere. There he is. He's there too. My goodness. I'm here too. Speaking so of what sincere, have I been doing this week? That's your Speaking segue. of sincere, that's me, obviously. That's your segue. Work with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best I'm going to get. Well, this <laughs> week, let's see. I did. Um, I played a bit of Zelda 2 this week. I had fun uh, trying to route out the the extreme rules, a.k.a. the uh, all uh, all keys, 100%. No pause buffering, and um, it, it's kind of fun. I like that this variation of Zelda 2 and that it's a bit more uh, robust. You don't have to worry about a single death ruining your run, although if you really want to um, you know, get the optimal time, you have to use a bunch of death warps, so you really don't have any lives to spare. But it's still a lot more, um, I don't know, it's more balanced all-around category. It's not all about just skipping things and, and doing the math. It's more about fighting technique and whatnot, so it's a lot of fun. Maybe it's just a nice break from any percent, which can be pretty frustrating. Oh, that's cool. Always nice to relax. Yep. Um, Duckfist. Uh, let's see. I've been doing a lot of just kind of like casual races on Speedruns Live. Um, did some Super Mario World practice with uh, my pal Golden yesterday. And uh, other than that, just kind of been, uh, you know, hanging out, watching the streams, and kind of just, just chilling. Um, oh, what is it? Uh, Path of Exile and Open Beta. I've been playing that, but that's not Speedrun related. And mm. let's see. Oh, I'm actually doing a real life uh, Ninja Gaiden 2 world record attempts. How about it? Oh, real life, real life Ninja Gaiden 2. Real two. life. So I would love to see this. Have you got a sword yeah. or? <laughs> oh, I did the sword only thing just to say I beat Hotoruby, but it's really stupid. So um, I'm going to do real, real life. just passes until the cop RNG yeah. shows up. <laughs> Um, just don't hurt yourself, that's all. Just the hard part I heard is finding the demons for the real life. <laughs> it's pretty difficult. But regardless, um, I had a bunch of stuff to say, and then I realized that was last week. So I can't really say any of that. But um, I played a bunch of games this week, and I am about 27 exits into 96 exit learning. There's a bunch of lame, boring strats still, because some of those levels are really, really horrible. And, uh, hey, so aside from that, I'm up to um, Special World. I'm about to start Special World, so, hey, how cool is that, right? 
I made progress in something. Special. Yeah, man. Keep I don't want to spoil up. anything for you, but yeah. um, if you're unsure of whether whether you're a super player or not, yeah. I'll actually, play on. Uh, I'll be honest. Um, I've been running a bit low. Uh, my morale's been low because I'm I'm not I'm just not sure if I'm a, right. a super player or not. Need a little self esteem boost. Yeah, uh, hopefully I'll get one. I, I'm really I mean, hoping. You really want to shoot for just being super player. I mean, honestly. Yeah, like hey, that's player, sort of right? what my goal is. That's what my goal is. Um, aside from that, I played some Apescape Three in the week. Um, I watched Surreal's run when it's got a funky bunch of cool new routing, which basically doing levels backwards and all this silly stuff. And um, I also routed the first stage of Katamari Forever by finding a video of someone who did it better than me and copying it. So that was. <laughs> Uh, actually, it's Very the second nice. stage, so I've got the first two stages rooted, so check that out. Um, Adam's next, Adam. Oh, hello there. Yeah. Um, I've been streaming a whole lot of GTA 3 runs recently, mm. um, some Amnesia, the Dark Descent as well. Um, GTA 2, I'm kind of picking it up casually uh, for streaming purposes, and I'm just picking up a whole pile of games that I probably shouldn't be picking up, just because they seem cool. Um, apart from that, I had some major issues with amnesia. Actually, I was unable to play it for a couple of days. Turned Whoa. out that, yeah, I know. Turned out that my, my color scheme was somehow making the game crash every time upon startup. All oh, right, and yeah, I picked up Toki. <laughs> <laughs> just just picked it up on a whim, you know. It's not. It's not important. It's Toki. It's just Toki. Um, yeah, and Weebles. Hello. Uh, I've been doing a lot of Amnesia record attempts, and I got the Amnesia Justine record, and then I decided that my Daniel record was crap, so I started doing a bunch of attempts at that and improved that a whole bunch. And uh, in Banjo, we got a suggestion for a new Rusty Bucket route that seems pretty promising, so we've been working out the kinks in that. Sounds it's good. good. Sounds good. Um... We have two things here that has been slipped into the introduction. Um, apparently, yeah, we will. We have decided on a little rotation of four game episodes and then a records episode because we know how much all of you love records and we really love the records episodes. But we also love the game of the week episodes. So we'll be doing four games of the week. And then a records apps, which will be four bumper guests, and we go into records in depth for the whole episode. It's real good fun. So we're going to be doing that. The next one will be, um, well, f- the longest time from now that it could be. Whatever that, <laughs> whatever that. Is. Um, we're not, gonna keep not next. Wait, wait. Schedule starting with whenever hey, we want. If you give me, if you give me a second, I'll give you the um, the proper. So it's not next week, it's not the week after, it's not the week after, but it's the week after that. That's when it will be. So whatever that is. Mark your calendars. That's when it will be, yes. Um, so if you've got any games you want to set a record on, save it for that week, because yes. we'll probably talk about it. Exactly, exactly. Also, uh, with uh, our new Twitter that you can see right there, at TSS Break, we're going to be taking uh, highlight clips from you guys, so um, as Doug has pointed out, apparently there are highlights in this show that people enjoy. We're not too sure if he's right or not. But if you hear anything funny or amusing or bad or depressing or plain pathetic, take the W split time split, which you can see all throughout the show, and tweet it uh, at TSS Break with a hashtag um, God, what, what's the hashtag going to be? Shit. PJ, make one up. You just shit, said Peter, hashtag make one up. shit. Hashtag shit. No, not hashtag shit. Don't. Um, <laughs> you just said Too late. It's too late. It can't be hashtag shit. They're meant to be highlights. It was your fault. You said it. Well, fuck you then. So this week's just hashtag <laughs> shit. So <laughs> tweet at TSS break with the time split timestamp from W split with a hashtag shit. If it isn't hashtag shit, it won't get uh, whatever. Basically, we're going to throw them all into a funky little video at the end of um, five weeks. 
just to clarify, this is highlights of our show, not highlights of like your rounds. Yeah. Or something. Oh yeah, the highlights of us. And oh. just to reclarify, you can find the previous episodes of our show. I think uh, they're highlighted on Twitch and linked in our channel info. Yeah. Also, you can use hash hashtag TSSB highlight if you want, as Fiesel pointed out in the thing. Hashtag TSSB highlight or hashtag I guessed shit also works. We'll accept both of those. Yes, we'll accept both of those yes. for this week. Perfect. And just to clarify, this is not a highlight. In fact, nothing so far in the show has been a highlight. This is not what we <laughs> right. want to highlight. <laughs> or the previous 44 episodes. None of those are highlights either. <laughs> Entertaining. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess put an ending time split. That would be great too. Uh, otherwise, if you just say time stamp twelve minutes and then don't give us an ending, we'll we'll highlight the entire show. But regardless, um, speaking of uh, not having a segue, it's um, amnesia. You never spoke game. of that, but I'll let it slide. Well done. Did we <laughs> oh, did we not speak of it? Maybe you just did. <laughs> Oh, Let's great. See. Perfect. I I'm guess. really confused, so let's just move on. Uh, Amnesia is our game of the week this week. As you can see, we got Adam Kuzinski and Mr. Weevils. Mr. Weevils being the current uh, world record holder of that game with us. In your face, Adam. Yeah, take that. Oh, sick bird. Oh. Wow. I'm going to tell him that. Now. And Notch isn't going to like you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only tweeted him because I thought he was the best. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste of my tie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but regardless, so our game. So we're going to go through this from the start. So what we need to start with is a little overview. Um, I don't mind which of you. I think the audience would prefer Adam's voice to do it. I'm sorry, Weebles. Adam, if you could give us an overview of what uh, Amnesia Speedrunning is like and what the game even is. Uh, well, the game is Amnesia the Dark Descent. It's uh, the first installment in a new series of horror games, by frictional games. And probably most people really know it for being the scariest game out there. Uh, it's basically about a guy who wakes up in a dark castle. Uh, he's got amnesia. He can't remember anything. But he suddenly finds a note written by himself to himself saying that he's took an amnesia potion so that he would forget everything. But then he reminds himself of everything again. What and an idiot. What the yeah, I know. It, yeah, it's... it's Seems so excessive to me as well. Jesus. Like this, this speed run could be a lot shorter if you just kind of yeah. skip that part. You should have a choice at the beginning. Do you want to explore the castle? No. <laughs> okay, All right. you win. <laughs> <laughs> Roll credits. Let's yeah. roll up into a ball and die. That's if the only it worked that way. Maybe we'll find a wrong warp someday. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, you just walk through a dark castle. It's really freaking dark throughout the game. Yeah. And uh, you encounter creepy monsters and such, and you have to solve puzzles, stuff like that. We don't really do any of that stuff. We just go out of bounds everywhere because that's more fun Perfect. and quicker. So it's a typical PC FPS in that it's really fucking broken. It's really, really fucking broken, yeah. Okay, so like, on a on a scale of, um, you know, super, well, I guess uh, Devil May Cry 3 from least broken to Dark Siders for most broken, how broken <laughs> is this? I'd give it an 8, I think. An 8. Okay, that's an eight. A, is an 8 like a DK64 broke. out of Darksiders, or is it a... I think, I think it comes close to DK64. I mean, there's okay. no, there's not a single area that isn't broken in this game. Okay, perfect. So an, uh, we're, we're looking at an 8. That's great. That yeah. sounds great, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, tell us about speedrunning this game, because it's kind of... I mean, if there was an argument for speedrunning spoiling video games and not playing them intentionally... Or not playing them as you know they're meant to be played. This is kind of like the most obvious example of that that I can think of. Yeah, definitely. Um, Speedrunning this game. Well, first of all, you have to kind of get over your fears because <laughs> yeah, I know that's lot... scary. That's a question for both of you. Were you both really scared when you started running this game? I was definitely. I uh, actually, um, I would generally kind of do the runs until storage, which is like. 10, 13 minutes into the game or something. And um, then I would just kind of start over or take a break for a day or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, I was I was shivering and everything, and then I just kind of got over it after doing a couple of full game runs. What about you, Weebles? Uh, well, I decided that uh, since this game is obviously not built for speedrunning in any way, that it should be the first game that I learned to speedrun. So that was the case. It makes. Sense. Uh, I was pretty scared the first time going through. Uh, 
after a couple of runs, it was pretty much all gone, though. And I did them back-to-back because I got tired of being scared. It yeah. was slowing me down. I I'm couldn't s- have that. <laughs> <laughs> That's real metagaming there, like real mind games from the game. Get over your physical fear before you can do it. That's amazing. <laughs> um, so tell us about history of running this then, because, again, it's kind of not one I would imagine people would try. Yeah, I mean, it was picked up two years ago already, actually. There was a guy called Fanta Gaming. Um, he did a speedrun of this. It was a segmented speedrun. And he came up with a couple of really cool tricks. Like, uh, he came up with the first kind of primitive out-of-bound strategies and such. I think his run was 34 minutes or something, segmented. Um, and it's still on YouTube. It's probably the first hit if you actually uh, if you look for it on YouTube. And it, it was a really cool run. And I think that pretty much inspired the first couple of SDA people to pick it up. Um, the first one was, I think, APJGM, an English guy who uh, worked on a segment at run for a really long time. And uh, after a while, Andre joined, uh, the Canadian runner. And uh, like shortly before AGDQ 2012, I looked at the thread and it just seemed kind of interesting. Um, I went into speedrunning this game and, well, I guess Weebles, Mr. Weebles uh, joined in not that long after me, I think. And that's pretty much everybody who's been speedrunning this game really seriously. If he joined us, started after you, how come he's better than you, Adam? Um, I think we're pretty much on an even level. I just don't do world record attempts, really. I don't really okay. like doing them that much. Because that world record attempts for this game is that you restart for 90% of the time within the first five minutes. That's a pretty risky strategy. It's a lot of Which, resetting. Yeah, it's a lot of resetting. Okie doke. So, um, so yeah, who? Well, hang on. Here we are. Yeah. So, what categories are, are there then for this game? I mean, I can't imagine there's a whole lot. The main category that people like to run is uh, any percent single segment. You just race through the game, and anything goes. Anything that you're man enough to try to do, because a lot of the tricks are extremely dangerous and very easy to kill yourself on. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. I didn't start with all the tricks, that's for sure, because yeah. some of them are just way too difficult. And then I guess uh, but people, segmented too? People also run yeah. segmented, yeah. Um, not as many. Uh, the record for that is held by APJJM, right? Yep, twenty-one thirty-one, I think it is. And that yeah. is a sick run. It is, is absolutely so amazing. But to people who are not familiar with Amnesia Speedrunning, it might seem like you know, just a regular segmented run. If you've actually played the game, you'll notice that he pulls off some absolutely ridiculous crap. He hmm. does the most amazing tricks. There's also a really good TAS, right? Is that true? Is there a TAS of us? Is it, t- is, is it, or is it just segmented? I'm sorry. Like, I'm con- no, no, there's just a segmented run. It's like, just saying, okay, never mind. Yeah, I'll I'll a TAS of us would be crazy. That would, that be, would bizarre, be ridiculous, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, I can't uh, imagine what that is. Yeah, go ahead. I know someone runs. Well, it says here, hundred percent, and also glitchless. Like, what's are they actually things or? Yes, uh, Andre has the glitchless record, if I recall, and his glitchless run is really cool. A lot of rooms get treated pretty similarly, except you know you do it on the floor instead of on the ceiling, <laughs> which is pretty lame, but it's all right. <laughs> the main difference is instead of being on the ceiling when there are monsters on the ground and they look up to you and they're really sad, they're on the floor and you're really sad. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of monster AI manipulation you have to do because they run faster when your lantern's out. So sometimes you want to bait them to certain places uh, so you can oh, like, yeah, shut those whole, on them and the whole get them out of the way. Oh, dude, dude, special trick coming out here, Mr. Weebles. Do you want to try and explain this one? Whoa, hang on. Well, we got to leave the whoa, explanation. Whoa. Yeah, like, no, dude. Okay, skip just this let the people skip this the episode. Part. All right. Yeah, you can't do that. All right, I just, just, just going to ignore it. Get your bearings We're just together. Gonna, yeah, yeah, okay, that's, that's, cool. That. that's cool. <clears throat> right. Uh, uh, and then the last yeah. category that some people will run is 100%, which has a really weird definition, but it's all right. Okay. You need to get all of the notes that are scattered among all the rooms, and you need to solve all of the puzzles. That is, any time that there's a little blue flash and your sanity gets restored. Hmm. Um, I don't really run that category because I have no idea where all the notes are. Yeah, I don't think anybody really actively runs that anymore. I think only Andre kind of picked that up, and I kind of want to pick it up, but it seems like it would be very similar to any percent, but you just pick up notes. So I don't know. 
Yeah, it's kind of interesting now. Okay, there yeah. might be some interesting group changes. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, records. Records. Um, oh, it's been moving down quite a bit recently. I guess Mr. Weeble should probably cover that one. Uh, so I've been pushing down the any percent record several times. It seems like every month or so I come back to the game and suddenly I'm 30 seconds faster, which is kind of nice. Uh, right now we're thinking as much as a 2730 might be possible um, with a really, really good run. The run I just had a few days ago was pretty good. It's mostly about getting all the tricks really quick, but it's good. So is that Sounds like a speed run? Yeah. Is that real time or game time? That is in game time because right. real time Easy. varies from load times. Yeah. Like Adam's playing on a laptop, so his la- load times are just absolute crap. Yeah. Yeah, they suck really badly. We tried to do races a couple of times as well. And I think we did a glitchless race first. <laughs> and uh, I was knew the route at all. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we both kind of knew what we were doing. I think he was slightly ahead of me. Uh, you would have won that race anyway, but I was, I think, six minutes behind in the end, just, you know, because of loading time. Yeah, I played Left 4 Dead with Adam, and he's always last one to walk yeah. out the door. You know like, what it's like. There was a while where we would, like, be at halfway through, like, the second room, and Adam's like, okay, yeah, let's go. And then <laughs> bitch and moan at us, because no one was helping him. But that's his fault, right? <laughs> that's his fault. I um, tried. I bought a new hard drive, <laughs> even. You still might have enough for people. Um, and actually, well, huh, I guess we can just talk about st- techniques and that now. I mean, is there any more about the history that you want to cover before we, we move on to actually what the hell's going on? I don't think there's that much history to discuss. Uh, to be honest, mostly what's, what's been found is just kind of these incremental small improvements, like, you know, a small clip somewhere in a room that lets us skip some, something small. I don't think there's any real major skip skips that have been found in the past two years. As far as I know, at least. Yeah. Uh, that's, it's mostly that's just been history. Andre and Aptogym just breaking the game apart, finding clips and setups and time savers all over the place. See, it's it's an original engine, right? So it's not like they can just use the same source tricks and all that. It's a completely different engine, yeah. They yeah. Uh, wrote this HPL engine, I think it's called, for the Penumbra series. Mm-hmm. And then they just expanded upon it and tried to simply add some features which in some situations break the game even more, and they've also fixed a couple of things. Like in Penumbra, you can just hold an item underneath you and then fly. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't really work anymore. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, they fixed some stuff, but they've also made things a bit more broken. But it's a custom engine, yeah. Speaking of all the cool tricks you can do... Yeah. Hey, let's we should talk about right tricks. In. Yeah, go for it. you got your whole list right there. Wow, this guy's catching yeah. on. Not bad, not bad. Dude, he's got it, man. It only took him two. I know. It only took me two times on the show. <laughs> now, if only he could understand row two, then we'd be set. <laughs> okay. Um... I, I still don't really get it, but okay. <laughs> um. Wait. So the physics engine in this game is just like downright awful. Uh, it turns out that the way wall work walls work there yeah. is that when you walk against it, it pushes you back. So if you walk into certain corners that make acute angles you can bounce off one wall and it'll give you enough speed to walk through the other. (laughs) There's a lot of instances where you just walk into corners and clip right through, like here in the guest room. Oh, I love this one. Just a question, just before we get started, um, I'm just trying to see if if it's above or below Donkey Kong 64 on the broken scale. Do you ever (laughs) accidentally go out of bounds? Yes. Okay, yeah. great. Okay. It's happened to you before. Do you accidentally go out of bounds and lose your entire run from it, or does it help? Yeah. It, Do you no, just no, like, walk just, and fall through helps. the floor? It it's helps. just the end. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the end. We have all the out of bounds tricks are, you know, rooted. We've got a perfect route, basically. Um, but as soon as anything goes wrong, and it tends to go wrong very often, um, we just have to restart, unfortunately, because every time you fall out of bounds where you don't want to, you either end up getting stuck. And then you just have to kill yourself, or you just kill yourself straight away, without even wanting to. So one that's how I think that usually works. One of the big issues with doing this kind of trick is that you're trying to run through the wall very quickly, but there's usually not a lot of floor out of bounds for you to stand on. So as soon as you get through, you really need to react, or you will just be dead. And it's the end. Yeah, there's a couple of these tricks where you just run through a wall, 
And sometimes the game just clips you through the wall randomly. Well, seemingly randomly, at least. You're like, you, you never really see it coming. So you have to respond to it super quickly, because if you don't turn around straight away, like if you don't do a 90-degree turn or a 180-degree turn, then you'll just fall off the level and like waste at least a minute, usually. Uh, oh, this is a fun area, the sewers. Probably the worst area in the entire game. So first you have to kind of jump into those rocks. There's a whole pile of rocks there. Every time there's a pile of rocks, you can just go out of bounds, by the way. <laughs> every single time. <laughs> all um, yeah, all of them. Every single one of them. Might be tricky sometimes, but usually it's pretty easy. So, oh, you skipped it. Damn you, Duckfist. Well, he didn't skip anything. Well, That's just how the video was. Really? Oh, okay, I see. Okay, fair enough. Well, oh, don't blame him. Skip. Yo, you I'm sorry, Duckfist. Who's this guy blaming Duckfist? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, you get out of here. <laughs> well, these are Mr. Weevil's highlights. I don't know what he uh, what he covered precisely. And I might have oh, ruined my I'll let, I'll let it be oh. paper. Hey, I, I raided you a couple of times. You should forgive <laughs> all right, me. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. Trading currency back and forth. Mod for raid. <laughs> all right. It was, it was those troop waffles, actually. That oh, yeah, those are a few years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did the yeah. only benefit of being Dutch, right? That, that covers, like, two insults, doesn't it? Ugh. <laughs> I should be okay for a while. <laughs> it won't be long before you insult him again. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so basically, corner clips, they're pretty good. Corner clips look great, great. Yeah, there's a lot of pillars that are super broken, like this one. You just jump into it, and then you can clip through it. And sometimes it pushes you to the left, and then you're completely out of bounds. And that's, that works in practically every room. Every time there's a room with pillars like this, you can clip out of bounds somewhere. So there's. Highlight reel is probably going to be riddled with lots of pillars that we jump into. And then <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah, just end up on the other side. So, speaking of pillars, it says you can edge boost here off pillars too. Uh, yes, you can edge boost of a lot of objects. And I've been talking for way too long. Mr. Weebles, you take yeah. over. Uh, yeah, so the way jumping works in the game is if you have any floor under your feet at all, you can press spacebar and jump again. But also, the game doesn't set your upward velocity to a static amount. Instead, it just increments it. So if you get somewhere where you can jump several times very quickly, as is often the case against these weird geometry pillars, you can just go straight up into the sky. Um, so most of the <laughs> tricks for the game involve using a weird corner clip to get out of bounds on some weird pillar, and then using weird geometry out of bounds to boost onto the ceiling. And then you're just on the ceiling, and you don't have to solve any puzzles or deal with monsters or anything. The clip That's being so shown good. right now is a pretty new clip, or that I was shown to me by a guy named Little Folk. I'm starting to think that the glitchless run might actually be quicker. You guys are just too <laughs> wussy to actually do it. But it's, it's actually, actually not, not that monster. much slower. <laughs> it, it's it's actually not that much slower, surprisingly enough. I mean, we go out of bounds everywhere, but usually these are kind of surprisingly small skips and by going out of bounds in some areas we actually kind of lock ourselves into a tunnel for instance and then we have to go out of bounds again and a third time as well like in this area we just have to go out of bounds endlessly just because so we get, get stuck there otherwise we skip one once. trip up a staircase to pull a couple levers that's all we skip and we have to do four out of bounds sequences i think maybe three yeah exactly <laughs> it's really silly oh this one's great you just walk into a wall and then you're out of bounds. That's the best trick ever. Yeah, that wall is just fake. It's not fair. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Okay. Well, if you start speedrunning, this should be the first trick you should try. Just to feel good about yourself. I mean, I thought the kind of, I thought the technique of just holding W and you know, waving your mouse around was complex, but take away the mouse and you know, you've got a pretty yeah. good trick. <laughs> yep. Works surprisingly often. One button out of bounds. I think we should try that. Mouseless runs. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Let's keep going. We got door frame clipping. So it turns out door frames are pretty bad in the game, too. Uh, right in the middle of the door frame, if you stand where the door would be if it were closed, you can pretty much just walk into the door and, or the, the middle of the frame, and it just doesn't exist. You can just go right through. Wow. Uh, not very useful very often, but it does work, and you can crash the game by getting to, uh, the end of the chancel before you're supposed to, using a door clip. Adam likes to... What do you do? You, like, jump way around the side. And... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool, actually. Um, yeah. people, people usually ask us why we collect these ore pieces, because there's six ore pieces that you need to collect. 
to kind of solve this puzzle at the end, and then you can go to the yeah to the final room. Now we collect all these six orb pieces, but then we skip the puzzle itself. And people are always really puzzled why we do this. Um, the reason for this is that if you don't collect the six orb pieces, you end up in this kind of strange version of the chancel. Um, that's one of the last areas, and you can skip the puzzle still without collecting all these orb pieces. But then as soon as you try to open up a door. That door just leads nowhere, so the game tries to load a map that doesn't actually exist, and it just messes up, and the game just crashes. And by collecting those six ore pieces, we actually trigger a different version of the chancel, and uh, then we can skip the puzzle and actually take the door that leads somewhere, rather than just, you know, crash the game. That could probably be better for a speedrun, I would say. Probably, I'm not unless playing want the to... game, but I would imagine... I mean, unless we want to define a new, different category, because it is a special ending, I guess. We do finish the game, in a sense. Okay, speaking of not giving me a good segue, um, flashbag <laughs> ignorance is the next one. Flashbag? <laughs> yep, that, that's what I said. That's, that's what cool, I don't know that now. trick. Did you explain <laughs> it's it? It's just a great segue. <laughs> <laughs> weevils knows it. Don't you, Weevils? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so basically anytime there's a monster around he'll normally chase you but if you trigger a flashback by walking across a certain trigger in a hallway or something just by knowing where it is the screen will flash white and you won't be able to run but the monsters will completely ignore you so you can just walk past I think we use that like four times in the run maybe three in the uh, glitchless run it's used three times I think in the glitched run it's twice it's in the storage and in the... Uh, yeah, there's, there's one example, actually. Like, there's monsters just chasing you, and then like, you, you can just dance around him, and he just completely ignores you. <laughs> He's just getting it out, man. Look at him. But the funny thing is that you can still interact with him during the flashback, so you can... Uh, if, you, if you hold a barrel inside of him, um, you can push him out of bounds as well, and then he gets stuck there. It's really hard to pull off, but it's really funny. You can push him out of bounds. So I'm seeing this, and I've got a question. Which is, um, have you ever, like, danced around him because he's, you know, ignoring you and then his AI is kicked back in and he's run at you and you scream like a little girl and run away? I've got a highlight of that, actually. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it happened to me today. It happened to me today. I think it's the last highlight or something. Oh, it's the last highlight, so we'll get to see it. Yeah, it, it should pop up at some <laughs> at some point. You don't hear the screaming or anything. Oh, actually, no. Was, I mean, there wasn't screaming, but it, it startled me pretty badly. <laughs> Because it was just so unexpected. You can also dance on their heads in certain spots. Oh, really? Anywhere where you can jump up on top of some stuff, you can turn around and jump on top of them. And just uh, walk around. It's pretty cool. It, it just dance around. They can't hit you when you're standing on top of them. They'll, they'll still try to attack you. But like they do this swing, and they always miss. There's one room where you, can, uh, where you trigger three monsters, and then you can jump on top of one of them. And they, all three of them just kind of you know, gather around you and all try to punch you. And I remember you looks uh, like dancing. trying to do that in your stream once, and then you missed the setup, and they just destroyed you. Oh yeah, that, that, that was, happens sometimes. That was like, a pretty good. Pretty their good AI track. is evolving, I think. Yeah. There's this one ramp that I just jump on top of, and then from that ramp I can jump on top of the monsters, and somehow they manage to boost their way up onto that ramp or something. I don't even know what <laughs> happened. It's like... <laughs> It's happened to me three times already. And you that's in the past install. month or something. <laughs> and you just don't learn. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're about to see shovels there. Um, okay, so the next one here is a, a staple of FPS speedrunning, which, or speedrunning in general, out of bounds, an uncrouch clip. The amount of games that have an uncrouch clip in it. More than six. <laughs> Rewals, you so, want to cover this one? <laughs> sure. Um... <laughs> So Adam the just other wants way to make flipping. sure he explains shovel. I know what he's getting. No, no, no. Is. He's getting yeah. shovel. He's getting shovel. Oh, he's getting shovel. He's trying to space yeah. it out. So other than running into corners to clip through stuff, you can opt to go through the ceiling. And usually with these giant caves ends of boulders, because boulders are completely broken apparently. But you wedge yourself right up against the ceiling. And you crouch, and then when you uncrouch, it moves Daniel upwards some, and when you jump, it moves him upwards some more. And usually that's enough to get through a ceiling if you're close enough to it. And the geometry is bad enough. And this will work. You program this and not lot. even realize that. <laughs> I don't know. This this took like five minutes of trying. <laughs> it's it not seems that like something in every FPS. There's like three things a speedrunner tries, and the uncrouching is one of them. Yeah. Like, 
well, first time you play any 3D game, it's like, okay, let's check the corners and see if those are solid. And then let's <laughs> check the ceiling and see if that's solid. <laughs> and it looks like they messed on both. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but practically every area in this game is broken. I don't think there's a single area where we cannot go out of bounds if we would want to. <laughs> not not that we always want to, but like usually, yeah, we can go out of bounds. You anywhere. do always want to, don't lie. Like, Sometimes when I stream, yeah, I do do like to play. You just out want of to go out of bounds. All right. Um, next up, we got boosting, which I think did you explain boosting already or not? Boosting, uh, yeah, I think we did. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, extended jump, right? That's the jump. Just jump a bunch. Oh. Yeah. Well, there's two kinds of boosts. Oh, okay. In the game. There's horizontal boosts and vertical boosts. We talked about vertical boosts already. You just spam jump yeah. and you go up into the sky. Yeah. But for horizontal boosting, you can get big bursts of speed by jumping right as you land on a piece of sloped ground. That converts all your downward velocity into forward velocity. You oh, so sort of like a forward. like a bunny hop, or is it more like a pushback? It's, it's more a bit like a bunny hop, yeah. I think. Oh, so one Maybe of you says it's we don't know. like a bunny hop, and one <laughs> yes. of you says it's not. I don't know anything about bunny hopping. So oh, okay. I mean, if I compare it to Left 4 Dead, for instance, then it seems a lot like a bunny hop. Right. Okay. So it is like, and also not like a bunny hop. Yeah, so it's in between. We're there settled then, we're set. Okay, perfect. Um, next up we have uh, oh, a list of a segmented trick. If you want to talk about this one, uh, it is load warping. Ooh. Um, load warping, yeah, that's a segmented only trick. Also possible in RTA runs, which nobody really does. Um, it's that you you have to face the door, or you have to face, like, upon saving and exiting, you have to kind of face in a specific direction in every room. And then as you reload the game again, you can click uh, the left mouse button on a very specific frame and then somehow trigger the main entrance door and then just exit the area. Straight away. You don't even have to walk back to the main door. You just use the door from anywhere. And that saves you a lot of backtracking sometimes. Like in the, in the storage area, that's probably the biggest area. You have to walk all the way through the storage. And in a segmented run or in an RTA run, you could just you know, save and exit at the very end of it and reload the game and then suddenly just exit the area straight away. It saves a lot of time, uh, which also explains why the segmented run is so much quicker. Because that is used pretty extensively in that uh, in that run. Yeah, it's like seven minutes faster. You said, right? Yeah, it's seven minutes faster. We're kind of catching up on it, though. Yeah, but it's it's still it's always going to be faster. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, then out of bounds during epilogue, which this one sounds sounds kooky and amusing. <laughs> so after you knock over the three pylons in the final room, and Alexander dies horribly. Spoilers. <laughs> um, whoa, whoa. Whoa. No, I'm never yeah. going to play it. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. You can't, yeah, you don't have to do this. You can't but if you spoil. To. This is a speedrunning show. You can't spoil the story. Yeah. <laughs> but if you choose to knock over the pylons, then there's an ending <laughs> epilogue sequence. And now you're where just spoiling you're it more. Well, Still geez, in control of Daniel. <laughs> I didn't know there were pylons. I there were shovels, and you ruined that for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go for it. Finish your story. <laughs> okay. Well, there's a bunch of set piece rooms that you walk through, and Daniel sort of talks to himself about how great he is. And you can go out of bounds, and we know how to go out of bounds in two of them out of the four. Uh, mostly because the walls are just completely fake. It's like going to a movie set, you can just walk right through stuff. The game kind of wants you like to walk a movie forward. Set. Wait, just on. like a real movie set. You can walk through stuff. Yep. Right. If the game just wants you to move forward, uh, it actually just forces you to move forward, but you can kind of counteract it and turn around, and then suddenly everything is fake behind you. <laughs> I'm sort of reminded of the end of Portal, where they go find the cake, and uh, of the ghouls and ghosts changing the control scheme during the demo. For some reason, it like is a mix of the two. I don't know why. <laughs> love that. <laughs> I love it. It's the greatest, but... Uh... All right. Um, next, okay. Oh, this is the last one on our tricks list. But before we get to this one, because I'm quite keen on this, um, I've been told there's a video. I don't. I think Duckfish should have it of a guy playing with vertical boosting. Do you have that one, Duckfish? It was linked earlier by one of our gu the guys. I don't think so. If I didn't have it before the show started, then I don't have it right now. You should have had it before it started. 
Is that... Wait, uh, I think this? you said you're leaving the tab up. Yeah, you've left the tab up. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Floating oh, hey there, Fox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> so this clip that we're alluding to yeah. is a clip from LaFoke, who's in the chat and runs this game as well. Uh, and he managed to, in the ending sequence of the game, the final room, where Alexander is hanging out, uh, instead of toppling the, the pylons with the laser beams, he opted to instead get up and behind Alexander and oh, dude, boost up this giant pillar and jump onto the floating rocks. And then he just rides around on them for a oh, bit. Oh, wow. I've never been able to do that. I've tried every time. Wow, great jump. Interestingly, they don't actually carry Daniel anywhere. You have to manually walk around to stay on top of it, or the floor would just fall out from below you. And then he gets kind of caught up here. <laughs> There's another one. He's had it, man. He's had it. He tried. <laughs> wow, that's so good. So, wow. Le Lefouk is uh, another runner of the game? Yeah, he's picked it up pretty recently. All right. Apparently he also but he's he's really good. Apparently he also plays Zerg, so there you go. Fun fact about him there. Um alright, now see now it's gonna be uh it's gotta be the shovel time. I need to I need to find out about this shovel. Oh the shovel trick. Oh we've got so many highlights of that. Which one do we which one should we pick? Every single one. I think we should go for yours, um, in the nave. Like the real location where we do it. The actual uh, one? Yeah, right. the actual one. I think that must go be for that. Go for it, man. Go for it. It's all, all right. Yours. So the shovel trick is perhaps the the crowning glory of the broken physics engine. You can do this with pretty much any object, but shovel is designed. It's shaped in a way that really is suited for this task. Essentially, you take the shovel and you drag it over near a wall that you just hate because it's in your way. And you put it down on the floor next to it, like you're laying a baby to bed. And then you jump on its head, just like the baby. Yeah. And it launches you through a wall, just like the baby. Um, so you should call this the baby trick. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. The positioning is pretty specific, and it seems pretty random whether or not it gives it to you. The shovel just misbehaves really <laughs> seriously. <laughs> you jumped on it too hard. Uh, but it'll just pop up behind your heels, the blade, and give you forward speed, and sometimes it's enough to push you through a wall. Did you just do the speedrunning thing where when you get the trick in the video, you bounce up and down happy? Yeah, I have oh. to. And here I get stuck in a desk. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Wow. Any room that has a shovel, you can do this on essentially any wall. That's why the shovels are there, right? For digging, yeah. Yeah, digging, digging walls. through walls. Digging through <laughs> yeah. That is what's supposed to happen in that room. That's part of the run, is using a shovel to go through that segment of wall. Because that skips going up the staircase and pulling the levers, like we mentioned earlier. Um, there's, actually, there's actually alternative skips to the shovel skip as well here, but this is just the coolest one. <laughs> so this is, the, this is the one that we go for. Okay, so unbelievably, we actually have time for Q and A as well. Can you believe that? Hang on, there should be there should there should be a really good clip, clip coming up here. I'm, I think. I'm gonna just, let it keep. There oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Oh, yeah. So that wall in particular misbehaves quite a bit. It likes to just eat physics objects. So. If your shovel touches it before you go through, the wall will just eat your shovel, and it will be gone. <laughs> uh, and you can just shove whatever you want. So here I shoved oh, a barrel God. through a different wall. Um, it took the barrel. Stuck. But don't worry about <laughs> that. That's actually a different hungry, wall. There are two walls in this room that do this. What an awful <laughs> wall. Can you out of bounds the other side of it and pick the barrel back up? Yes, they just yes. hang out, out of bounds. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Wow, What's even cooler awesome. is that sometimes these objects get launched out of the wall and they just fly around the room. <laughs> oh, I think that happened. That actually happened now. I think. I from, say, yeah. Have you ever gotten killed from an out of bounds object flying back inbounds and hitting you? Oh, so it the way that, that hurt you, but it can hurt you a lot. Yeah, and the way that the health system works in this game is that you can only die from monsters or if you fall into a pit. Um, you oh. can't actually die from falling damage or anything else like that. So you can drop down the highest staircase ten times in a row be barely conscious at the start and just keep on doing it and you'll never die from it. Interesting. Yeah. Perfect. And launch objects won't kill you either. Although they can hurt you pretty badly. 
shovel can hurt you badly as well. Sometimes the shovel will launch you up into the up into the ceiling, for instance, and then you just lose half of your health. Okie doke. Um, right. I've How? got uh, I've got a quick question, if you don't mind. Okay, sure. Um, would either of you be playing this game if it wasn't so broken, or is it one of those games that like you picked up out of curiosity and then? Started liking it more and more as you found out how busted it was. I or would. Do you just it. legitimately like the game? This is I like love... one of my favorite games. I, yeah, I mean, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I got really turned on to survival horror games once I played like Silent Hill Two and some of the early Resident Evils. I was just like, yeah, this is the best. And then Frictional came out with Amnesia, and I was like, yeah, this is actually the best. <laughs> And okay, I was so it wasn't just really happy with the game was... overall. All right. So it wasn't the fact that it was busted that made you like it. You liked it before that. Right. The amnesia hipster. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was already broken before I found out that it was broken. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, but I mean, it's just, it's just a fantastic game. And it's fun to speedrun glitchlessly as well. It's less fun, I have to admit that. But it's still cool. You know, just facing your fears and outrunning the monsters and everything and people always admire our courage for actually being able to play through this game your courage without the lantern too we oh. skip the lantern by the way because well, your speedrun is you always skip the whatever yeah. makes it lighter skip the light <laughs> exactly. source yeah like, there's one light source at the start we just kind of walk into the room and then backtrack out of it because there's one trigger in there that gives us some extra walking speed and we just skip the lantern because it was it would cost us I think four seconds or something at most Okay, so seeing as we haven't heard Feasel's voice in too long, he's going to ask some questions that he nabbed from the chat. Oh yeah, I nabbed a couple of good ones here. Bagged a good uh, Nabbed a few good ones. So, <laughs> the Englishman asked, um, are there any leftover jump scares you can trigger from Out of Bounds? There's that Iron Maiden jump scare. Um, yeah, um, this game doesn't really have jump scares, to be honest. So, I can only think of the Iron Maiden or actually, there's there's one that's in the highlight, I guess, that I mentioned earlier. That shows up at the very end. Uh, that's the kind of jump scare you could tri- trigger, and that's only possible if you use an out to bounds route, pretty much. Shovel is amazing. Yeah, that door is budged. And you can just shovel your way through there. <laughs> there's also that's no the hallway or room or anything. It just leads out of bounds. It's a good yep. door. All right, Feezy. All right. All right. Well, our pal S. Dot asks, are you using mouse wheel for wall boosting? I am not. I have mashed spacebar. Wow. Uh, I have recently converted to the use of both the spacebar and the mouse, uh, the wow. scroll wheel, because my keyboard sucks, and that's the only way I can just kind of mash quickly. You know, so you... I used to do it without it, but now I use the mouse scroll wheel sometimes, although it's not a free scrolling one. At you, least, can, so. you can get drivers that you can have two mice. But every time you every time you boost, you still need to walk forward. You need to just walk. Just like use your chin. Darkfist so. uses his chin. Kai <laughs> Hex uses time. his chin. Yeah. Chin puts. Chin puts. Yeah. Oh, I'm up for that. All right, go for it. In fact, there's a separate APM gauge just for shit. Just for chin puts. <laughs> just for chin puts. Oh, Next okay. stream is going to happen, dude. Darkfist. Uh, sorry, Feasel. Ah. All right, we've got a question from Honorable Jay here who asks, which version of the game is faster to run and why? So the latest and, version is fastest. Yeah, right? this, is, this is one of the few games where if you actually patch it, it's quicker to speedrun. There's this uh, weird glitch that's, that happens like one in 10,000 times, apparently, where you uh, can reach the storage area without ever collecting well, this item. This naked comes... Oh, that's Alexander. You can clip inside him. What's he doing? <laughs> He's just hanging out, checking out the spot collection. <laughs> All right, see you later, buddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then I tried to jump on top of the rock here. I failed. Oh, oh, sadly. Not as good um, as the fog. Anyway, we, we run version 1.2, the latest version, because uh, there's this chemistry part that we skip picking up. And in the 1.0 version, you don't it, it doesn't put in your inventory if you don't pick it up. In the 1.2 version, they just give it to you. Um, and that allows us to skip, like three minutes or four minutes worth of uh, walking through random areas at the start. So, I mean, that's the only difference, really. They fixed a couple of small glitches that were not really useful anyway, but 1.2 is definitely still the quickest to uh, to speedrun. Alright. Um, Feezy, next question? Have you got one? 
Um, I think that that was the end of the question. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Somebody whoa. asked here. There's one there in chat. Grab that one quickly. Whoa, 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 whoa. The fake end room. Yeah. Is asked fake. about. Have you guys talked about the fake end room? Well, I guess that's when the when you don't collect the ore pieces and the game just crashes on you. Um, yeah, so you have to collect the six ore pieces. That triggers a monster spawn in the room that you're actually seeing right now in the highlight. There's like three monsters charging at you and they kill you, kind of. And uh, then you have to walk through a couple of areas again and reach this area again, which looks similar, but it's actually a completely different map. And if you skip that monster encounter the first time, you just... I mean, you can reach the door at the end of this uh, of this tunnel behind the electric fence, but it doesn't lead anywhere, so the game just crashes. We'd love to find a way to actually skip the whole OP stuff, but it doesn't seem possible. Game crashing because of orbs. I got mm, it. Um, it's completely new to me. I'm not... All right. Okay, so how would you advise somebody tackles trying to learn this game? Well, since it's a, a trick-based game and failing a trick is extremely punishing, one of the first things you can do is you can go into one of your config files and enable a feature that was not intended for users to actually use, which is the quick save, quick load feature. And it just rebinds a couple keys to let you save and load pretty much instantly. Whereas normally you would need to go to the main menu uh, and reload a save file, which completely reloads the room. Unfortunately, it also does some light memory corruption and can eventually crash your game if you do it too many times. And it also messes with some game states, so the game doesn't play exactly like it normally would. And since, you know, you have to go in and change code to make it usable, it's not really for runs, but it's good for practice. And so it's, it's the equivalent of um, save state practice. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. It's yeah. just quick save and quick load, really. Okay. I guess the second tip would simply to be to visit Mr. Weebles and my stream, because we stream this pretty regularly, and like, if you have any questions whatsoever about any of the tricks or something, then we are always more than willing to help you. Like, we can show you how stuff works and explain how yeah. it works on the spot we, as well. We purposely don't go into actually how to physically do a lot of these tricks, because they can be quite confusing, but the guys definitely will if you ask them. You can do that in pretty much any speedrunning stream. Unless the yeah. guy has 4,000 viewers and they're all spamming frankers, they will explain how to do <laughs> anything. And last trick, trick number three. Or tip, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say last trick, trick number three. <laughs> that doesn't seem <laughs> right. I'm way off that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is this an all tricks show? Yeah, since the run has so many tricks in it and some of them are just ridiculously brutal. Um, as opposed to just doing a single clip or a single boost to go somewhere. Actually, like, doing a clip and then three boosts right after and then another clip is much more intensive. And a lot of them behave really poorly. So the harder tricks, you probably don't want to do right off the bat. And uh, I've been told there's a wiki? Yes, APJM and I are actually setting up a wiki for Amnesia Speedrunning. Um, we've created... Well, we currently in the process of creating pages for every single room in the entire game where we show pretty much every trick and glitch that we know of so i mean we're just going to make videos of how to go out of bounds everywhere and you know the boost that you can get that kind of stuff so i mean that's still in its early stages but in a couple of weeks it should be pretty much complete probably and it'll definitely weeks. have well I, I think by the end of this week actually it should have the any percent route explained and but you said every clip detail. that you know of. That's like every surface and every ceiling <laughs> in the entire game. <laughs> every room with a filming now is going to be really I complex. I hope you have <laughs> screenshots of it, because it'll be like, okay, this room, and it'll just be this black <laughs> wall, and you'll be like, okay, yeah. this... you got to stand here. No, but I mean, we're going we're gonna to try and explain all the tricks on the wiki as, clear, as clearly as we can, and, you know, post videos for the most important stuff, at least. Maybe not every one of them, but the ones that are actually useful. Or could be useful, and uh, uh, that's still in its early stages. I think there's a link to it and the Amnesia thread on uh, on SDA. So if you're interested in speedrunning Amnesia, you should definitely check out that thread anyway. There's a wealth of information in there, and uh, the wiki is going to be updated soon. All right, cool, cool. Um, and are there any last other things you want to mention about Amnesia before we move on? Um, 
it's a cool game, and everybody should run it. It's it is definitely a lot more fun than you might expect. <laughs> Machine for Pigs coming soon, based on the Which, same physics engine. It's gonna be good. <laughs> With similar similar assets as well. So um, that's, uh, if there are shovels. Yeah. It's gonna be over. I'm not yep. even gonna get my casual run out of it. We had some oh, I, last questions there, but I was so excited that we we're about to move on on time that I might just skip them. Ah. No one cares about the water monster. Yeah, come on. Mention the water monster. That's the only one you'll get. The water monster? Can you the, get the right. water monster to go out of the water? Get Not that I've been able to, no. I think you could... I've, I've got a method in mind that could push him out of bounds and kill him. But it wouldn't be very useful and it would be <laughs> stupidly difficult. But I'm pretty sure that it's possible. What Sounds I have like been able to... You can stand on top to... of the water monsters. They have yeah, exactly. a hitbox just like the grunts and all the other monsters, and you can just ride around on top of them. They can't hurt you. All mm. right. Cool. Um, so it's records time, right? Is it records time? This is when we normally do records. I think so. I'll yeah. know when I see the split. Okay, yeah. So for those of you Wait, who are new to the show... Enough. Hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's records time. <laughs> For those of you new to the show, uh, this is where we go into the Amnesia part ends. So we go talk about a ton of other games in our record section. This week is apparently the swag glasses in honor of the um, glasses that made their appearance at AGDQ. Hope you enjoyed those. You, you got a pair, Adam, at home? I have a pair. I've got two of them. Pair on, right? I wear them every time I stream, actually. I should probably... I was thinking of going to go get them, but then I'd have to go upstairs, and that's just too much effort. So I think mine are in my car. <laughs> God, I'm not right going here. out there. <laughs> Use them to hide bloodshot eyes. Am I right, PJ? Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> They're not my eyes. I just have some bloodshot eyes in my car, and i got to make them look less suspicious. Okay, so completely forget what I said about this is where amnesia stops, because we have two amnesia records to talk about. <laughs> so, <laughs> Weebles, do you want to go over these? Oh, oh, hey. Oh, no. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Keep no, it. we need our disclaimer. Um, oh, oh, I almost forget. So, we sort of call these world records because it gets people excited, but bear in mind they might not actually be correct. We apologize in advance if they are not, but they are merely people's personal best as far as we know. Uh, they could be wrong, um, and if they are, for God's sake, don't be a dick about it. Very good disclaimer. Thank you. But you Another quick know, heads so up. Don't, uh... Yeah. So we don't put up false stuff, of course. But yeah. We do yeah. our best. We do, we do our, our best. best, yeah. Another oh. quick note. All these records are in the link database. So if something catches your eye, you can go click the TSSB link database button in our info page. Yep. And have, uh, go there. We have and and mentions. Well, no, that's going to get us... No, it's going to get its own special section, PJ, unless you're going to say something different. What I, think. I, I have no idea what you think I'm going to say. Okay, well, go say it anyway, and I'll tell you if you're wrong. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, you should all thank Arcano for Oh, updating. no, you're wrong. I am wrong? He gets his own special mention. Okay, fine. Forget that. Don't okay. thank him yet. Don't thank him yet. Unthank him for now, but thank him later. Unthanks. Okay. Weebles, let's go. All right, so uh, I was doing some amnesia attempts early this week, and I got this really good time bringing it down from 2855 to 2816. It was pretty ridiculous. Uh, it was a really massively good run. Uh, the run before was pretty good, but I lost like 20 seconds on a couple of tricks and with a couple more aggressive strats and really nailing those tricks, I brought the time down a lot. It can probably go sub-28 without too much trouble. Well, no, it'll be a lot of trouble. Um, it's going to be a lot it. of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be really hard, but yeah. it is totally possible. Um, and then Justine is a game that comes with Amnesia if you buy it on Steam or whatever. It's just free DLC as an alternative uh, scenario. It's only four rooms long, and uh, now it's only four minutes long as well. <laughs> um, the first three rooms, you go out of bounds almost immediately and then just run to the exit. And the fourth room's a shovel trick, so it's like my favorite run ever. It's really fantastic. Yeah, it's just all the best stuff thrown into an action-packed four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Pretty good. Zero monsters to deal with. Perfect. Pretty good. All right. Um, oh, so now, who is best to talk about this one? I kind of want to say Duckfist, but I might kind of want to say Duckfist too. Yeah. Okay. okay. I don't know much about Batman, but I've watched it a lot. So, 
Yeah. Um, so here is uh, Batman by, uh, of course, Dexter. Big uh, Ninja Gaiden and DuckTales player and stuff. And uh, that's in 10 minutes and 53 seconds for the any percent category. Now, here's our video of it. So Dexter has been really going back and forth with uh, with Funk Doc and Sinister One uh, for this game. Uh, mostly Funk Doc, who had previously had the record on it. And he finally achieved the sub-11. So um, I actually haven't seen this run. It must have been gotten very recently, like in the past few days. Uh, I saw a Funk Doc tweet about it, but... That's probably nothing surprising. And Batman, it's, it's a really, it's a really precise game. Of course, it's a Sunsoft game, so you know it's a really solid platformer, and with great music. But uh, there's there's a lot of RNG in this game. Just mostly like drops, just getting health refills when you need it, and getting ammo uh, early on, and uh, dealing with some of the boss patterns can kind of be a pain. But it's really precise execution wise. I mean, it's no surprise that uh, people like Funk Doc Sinister One and Dexter play this game, but. Definitely an awesome run. Uh, check out Dexter stream at uh, twitch.tv slash dxtrslab. Uh, there's a lot of cool games. So is this... He's, oh, he's throwing batarangs. I thought he was just punching that. Um, Adam, quick question. Which is the better version? This or Sega Master System? Sega Master System, clearly, because okay. that one's 1 minute and 41 seconds long, and it's got a duck car in oh, it. Oh, it does that have a duck car. That's that's because they only programmed one level on that, because the developers <laughs> realized what they were making. No, no, they, they programmed half of a level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't give it more credit than it's due. My bad, my bad. You. Um, just so you know real quick how good this time is, Funk Doc had an 11-11, like, some months ago, I think, in preparation for HDQ. And we thought that that run was amazing, and then Dexter got an 11-10. Yeah, that's right. And now... Yeah. A 10.53. Like, it's a massive improvement. I think it was stuck on 11.1 for a long time, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah, 11.1 was, was last week or something. Yeah, and then 10.53. So where do we know where the times come from? Because that's a significant amount. I have no idea. This looks pretty ridiculous. Or well, what you guys just saw a minute ago. I don't know, I'm yeah, watching it's... it right now. <laughs> it's... Yeah. It's a... <laughs> You're oh, even uh... further ahead. By the way, there are weekly, I think, Batman races. I want to say at 3 p.m. on Saturdays, Eastern Standard Hang Time. Hang on, let me just check any of these hundreds of tweets about it. <laughs> okay, I'm yes, sure. it is. 3 All p.m. Right. <laughs> 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 Usually including Sinister, Sword Funk, Doc, and Dexter, of course. Yeah. Uh, right. It um, kind of goes with Ninja Gaiden, apparently. Yeah, yeah, right after Ninja Gaiden. Two go well together. And all of it is during Super Mario World, so take your pick. Choose your side. No pressure. Um, that's a tough one. All right, so you, I don't know why he was doing to the Joker there, but hey, let's move on. Pretend that never happened. Next up, oh man, we have a lot of videos in a row. All right, okay, cool. Rondo, what the hell is this? Somebody talk about it. Um, Rondo is a pretty cool game featuring Richter. I think this is. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to shoot myself in the foot here, but I think this is the only game where Richter is like the, the actual main character, even though he's in Portrait of Ruin and Soden. I think this is the game that he's originally from. Um, and I think this is the game that was uh, Turbo Graphics, but Sets played the uh, Virtual Console version, port, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so, anyways, you're doing uh, well there. That's some good knowledge. Yeah, oh, thanks. Yeah. How long? How long I, is the Wikipedia article? I dug real deep. I don't, I don't know. I didn't even go that far. <laughs> I just remember seeing it at one point. But anyways, um, yeah. So Seth's got a twenty-two fourteen and then a twenty-two thirteen today. Um, it's a pretty neat game. If you watch the tests of, I'm assuming there's a test of this, but I haven't seen it. But the, <laughs> the test of Dracula X, which also uses Richter. Like, just backflips everywhere. And the strongest weapon in the game... This is the best highlight I've ever seen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? I enjoyed... Really enjoyed this part of the game, so... <laughs> so I believe they reused a lot of, like, uh, sprites and stuff in this game in Symphony of the Night. And just like uh, later Castlevania games, uh, the music, or all the Castlevania games, music is awesome. So this is a really cool game that kind of went kind of under the radar because it was on Turbo Graphics, but it's really cool. Check it out. Yeah. It's also Maybe Seth will right? use the key at some point, too, and that's the manliest run in history. The key, it's like, 
So you can get all those sub weapons, right? Just like the other Castlevanias, the axe, holy water, dagger, Bible, all those. Yeah. And then there's a key, which you're supposed to use to unlock this door to save your girlfriend or something. But if you're speedrunning, you don't care about that. You just care about taking names. So you get the key and use it to attack stuff <laughs> because the key does more damage than your whip. And uh, it's like the shortest range thing ever. So it's a pretty ridiculous thing. But um, I don't know if it's actually faster in this version or if that's just a Dracula X thing. Wow, this is like way cooler than shield dashing. Yeah, yeah, like constant back 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 <laughs> What is that? All right, yeah, and now you're fighting a book. I'm not sure is that a bookshelf. Might be a painting. I don't know what it is. Doesn't fighting matter. a book with other books. Yeah, fighting a book with a book. Of course. He's just literally walking backwards. How is that even faster? Yeah, you can just moonwalk in this game. <laughs> yeah, you can. It's pretty slick. <laughs> Look at that. This is ridiculous. All right. Um, oh man, someone made a highlight video for the next Castlevania game, so we can't even just talk about it while this runs. Oh, no, the next Castlevania game's pretty neat. Alright then, go on. Um, so Ram Scout and Aftermath have been working on Portrait of Ruin a lot lately, and uh, Ram Scout, in typical Ram Scout fashion, said he'd never work on a run, and then the next week it's a run. <laughs> so he's got a 1356, um, that's in game time, in the, uh, the any percent with like, Jonathan, Charlotte, I don't know what that category is. I'm assuming that's the default mode, because you can play as Richter in this one, too. But this game has some pretty neat tech, because you um, you can call your partner like in the middle of a jump, and uh, if you do some cool stuff with the touchpad, you can do a double jump. And if you do some really cool stuff with the touchpad, you can do like up to eight additional jumps. I think Aftermath got up to the octuple jump. So you can go places that you're never supposed to be able to go. And what you're seeing right now, well, what you're seeing like seven seconds ago, is this version's zips. Because every Castlevania game has zips, because Konami just never learned how to make walls. Right. And uh, so if you stand like right on the seam, the pixel before a screen transition, and you suspend, which is like a quick save, then when you reload, it puts you in the far edge of the next screen. And if that happens to be a wall, you just start zipping and then have to suspend again to get back inbounds. So whenever you see him, like, suspend, you should look on the left screen. That's the map. And sometimes for the longer zips, he just goes all over the place on the map. And it's pretty great to see. But it's a really, really cool game to watch. If you've never seen this game, or you've never seen um, Rom Scout somehow, then you should check out his channel, because he's been doing a lot of this, and it's pretty awesome. This step is is my favorite. I think it's this one. He just like shoots straight up the map, like twenty rooms. It's nice of the game to have the map on screen for you, so you can mm -hmm. see that. Yeah, well, it's a DS game, so that's the. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. In any other so game, that would have been nothing. It's so good. That map is just <laughs> just off. <laughs> well, now you're fighting hands. Yeah, you're fighting Dracula. Oh, it's a super, super long fight because you get there at like level nine instead of level forty or something. So, so it's like the uh, first boss of Riga. Yeah, for you two and a half Thanks, minutes. Thanks, man. I've been working on it. Well done. I know the audience are all big Riga fans, so I'm trying to appease them. Like he's got want. just a big notepad stapled next to his computer of references. references he's got a is a necessary. Okay. Um. So next up, this is a good one. I'm glad we finally got a clip of this on the show. Ah, oh, dude, there's uh, Nintendo icons. Someone keeps leaving a space after the N64 symbol. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. There's no space huh. there. There's, there's totally well, a space. Yeah, I just deleted it. All right. Okay. Well, it's it's N64. Um. Now, do I want to try and explain this, or shall I like? Have you ever you seen it? Go? No. Okay, then you probably shouldn't try yeah. to explain probably it. Probably the right one to who, explain it. Who has seen? Um, it? I have. Yeah, I can. I okay. can kind of talk through it. Go for it. Talk through I'll it. Do my best. There's actually a comment here, anyway, so you can just read that. All right. Um. So Topol got a, an any percent wrong warp category, uh, in four twenty seven point three three. He says it's about 28 seconds slower than the TAS. 
Um, this wrong morph is US 1.1 version only, so it doesn't work in any of the other versions or the Japanese version. It saves like one and a half minutes compared to one player. Um, basically, you have to have a completed file, and that lets you do these time trial things. So you start a new game, one player, and save, and then go to the time trials, and you like out of bounds in the time trial and fly to the world map from there. And then it does some stuff where it like loads the data from the time trials mode into the one player file that you created before it. And uh you can basically just fly directly to the last race then. I love that you can out of bounds out of the map. Yeah. Like out of a race. Out of the map and go to the loading screen for the main yeah. <laughs> the main <laughs> arena. So and now since you're you, supposed to have the plane here, you can just fly straight through the top and go right to the last oh, race. Wow, they've really broken this one, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think people finally realized that it's a rare game for the N64. Yeah. And then it takes said, them a little uh, while, doesn't it? Like it did yeah. with Banjo, too. Right. So the question I have here, and I guess none of us know the answer, is what does this mean for 100%? <laughs> like. What do you mean? Like, um. The hundred percent category, is that still gonna use TT bitch slap and all of that, I guess, or I don't think hundred percent ever did use that, did it? Yeah. Because you still have to oh, not 100%, races. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, I could yeah. Never mind. Completely ignore that. This think. would be its own category because this, this is would be major skips. Like new game plus glitches or oh, wrong yeah. or something. It's definitely a definitely something different. <laughs> They've changed it into three categories. There we go. So okay. um, we were thinking of doing a Diddy Kong racing uh, thing, and if you know, seeing as how broken it is, I think we could actually do that. So hey, maybe in the future. Well, that's on our list already. So I love this. This isn't even a race anymore. Yeah, you fly out of bounds and then fly underneath the level. Yeah, sounds about right. Perfect. At the beginning of this race, too, it's pretty neat. Since you're in second player mode, because you have to do second player time trials to do this whole wrong morph thing, yeah. um, the the second player it looks like a soft lock, but the game's just trying to figure out what to do for like a minute of the race, and it just like kind of pans around the level and zooms out and does some weird <laughs> stuff, and then finally lets you start flying around. The pig doesn't know what the hell's just happened. The pig is not happy about what just happened. So much that he's going to die. Anyway, so it's a rare game for the N64. Any of you need speedrunning? That's what they're all like. Next up is... Oh, the time didn't go through. Okay, cool. Well, we got the time. What is it? It's it's gone now, but it was... It said 8.07. <laughs> it was there. <laughs> it was there, wasn't it? Like, I'm sure it was there. It's like an 8.07 or an 8.07. I think this was his last... His last act. Eight fifty one. They say in the chat. Oh, okay. Eight fifty one. That's not. I was told eight. It had a seven in it. Make it eight oh seven. Well, I can't. I'm not gonna lie about it. They're all. These yeah, nobody will know. Ones. Just, just ban these people. Nobody will know. One of them's Mundungu. Okay, so it's eight fifty one or it's eight oh seven. Um, something like that. Tompa, you gonna help us or not? You just gonna sit there moaning. Seven eleven. <laughs> It's an 851 then, or something. It we voted. We decided democratically. The, the Donkey Kong Country record by Klosti, who is Japanese, right? Or I not? have no idea. I can't. I, man, we really dropped the ball on it. It was all written in this thing, and then Tomba deleted it. We sure did our research, and now it's gone. Dude, Tomba did the research and then broke it. Okay, Klosti yeah, is go, underground Tompa. and Swedish. There you go, underground Swede. I guess like a real Swede. Um, he got an 8.51 and then in the any percent and then also beat the all levels record with a 50, a 35.27 which that's is... crazy time. Yeah, that's nine seconds quicker than TJP's old one or is it more? No, it's like a minute something. Oh, is it? Like thought... he had a previous run earlier in the week and uh, it looks like 36.11 was TJP's last. Uh, so he had... He had beaten TJP's time and then got this other run yesterday, I think. All right. And uh, was like 16 seconds ahead going into the last world or something. And then got the tanked up trouble jump roll, which is yeah, like the hardest one to do. Yeah, there's a bunch of jump rolls now. I was talking to Mundungu about it in uh, AGDQ. 
And he, he said, uh, basically, for better or for worse, this game is going to become jump rolls now. Yeah. Who, who can do them, where and when. And they're pretty fun to do, actually. They're pretty cool. So, hey, good congrats, Klosti, another Swedish person coming out of the woodwork. Um, next up, wow, the... Can you believe it? I thought this record was going to stand forever. Pie Pusher 11 beat the Donkey Kong <laughs> Jungle Beat record with a 136.10. Uh, congratulations. It's not a music game. Uh, Doom 64 Peaches. Whoa, that's pretty quick. Huh. Uh, he beat the Be Gentle, which is easy mode difficulty record with a 40.59. That's, I thought it was 45 last I saw. It's 45, then 44, then like 42 or 43 or something like that. It's been coming down a little bit at the time. Darkfist, that's not even the right video, but hey. No, so he's playing actually, in the order that exactly the right video. Listed. at the right time. So, oh, come on now. Burned. Wow. And, um, Ouch. Yeah, so Peaches is sort of swapping between the, uh, what is it, You Will Die and Be Gentle? Watch Me Die, I think. Watch Me Die. You that's... Will Die. Watch Me Die. Uh, uh, which oh, looks wait. really d- difficult because uh, limited ammo, everything takes so many hits. I mean, hey. there's also so the Watch Me Die thing written here too. The one twenty two fifty one by Peaches. Yep. So there you go. Yeah, that one I think he got last week, but we didn't mention it because uh, hundred records. A hundred records, yeah. So there you go. It's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty brutal. Watch Me Die is pretty, pretty freaking hard, as you can see by the fact that it's 40 minutes longer. Yeah. Yeah. But cool, it's Peaches, I mean, and it's on N64, so it's, it's fine. He doesn't even need to have competition to keep at it. He'll just, he just goes on he his own. He just does it anyway. Yeah, he just, he, you wind yeah. him up and watch him go. All right, um, the Earthbound Glitchless got beaten by Skate Man which is apparently about 15 minutes quicker than the world record. He got it in a race just now. <laughs> is that up yeah. on the screen or not? Uh, sure. It is, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's a 458.33 SNES, any percent English glitchless. So none of the cool glitches, all of the regular gameplay stuff. So That's a crazy time, by the way. Is there Flying Man used? I don't think so. No. Oh, well, fuck it then. Well, it's maybe, what? maybe in Magic Hand, but not on Gygas. Well, like, the record, we had a record going into the show of, like, 513 or something. And then I just saw Congrazio posted this, like, an hour ago. Special Congrazio. One on its own Congrazio, too. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Insane time. All right, so the Echo Train keeps rolling. This is the... Wait, is this actually a record? I think so. That's just past. I saw it on yeah, the SSB. So. so it's pretty sure it is. All right. Well, cool. Let's go. Um, it is Echo the Dolphin, the Ed percent twenty six thirty nine by Rizard, who apparently is a French person. Echo, get in the Echo community. Years and years of people saying they're doing Echo Rom. Apparently, they all, all come out of nowhere. Um, so, what was it? A half baked profit? Was that the guy's name? Yeah, he uh, had I a twenty eight eleven. Yeah. So this. Completely crushes the previous time. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, the echo, echo scene is growing, man. It's getting huge. Yeah. The ocean's bigger. No, I can't think of anything. Sorry. Well done. Oh, that yeah. went so good, too. Oh, there you go. It says he's commentating Echo in the French stream. Oh, man. Look at that. So, yeah, there's going to be Echo competition by the looks of things, unless this just kills it. But, uh, I mean, as we discussed before, look how freaking quick this dolphin goes. Yeah, it looks it's, like it controls awfully. It, not at that speed, it does not yeah. control well. And, uh, it controls terribly, but plus it makes it Genesis, easy. so. Yeah. <laughs> so. Shut up. It's a good console. <laughs> Just let it, leave it alone. Last processing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm, it's cool to see. I mean, I've always wanted to see Echo, and I'm glad that it's actually happening. So, Coolio, Adam, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you read this one and not go into too much detail? Um, I'd love to go into lots of detail, but I don't even. I didn't even know that this game existed. Actually, believe it or not, uh, I had a, a guide for it. I oh, do have a guide. For it. it came free with a magazine. Oh, really? No. Yeah. Huh. That what do you know? Anyway. 
The game is Evil Dead Hail to the King by KKRT in 5310. It is an any percent run, and I'm guessing that it's totally awesome. Uh, do we have any notes for this one, actually? Uh, there's a little comment here, but you don't really need to read it beyond it's a really bad Resident Evil clone. Okay. Um, yeah, he didn't make a highlight, unfortunately. It's a bad Resident Evil clone, yep. and there isn't much to say about the game either, apparently. Okay, perfect. Speaking of so bad... Cool. P- speaking of bad PSX games, do you want to do the next one as well? <laughs> oh, oh wow. I'd love to. Subtle. I, wow, look at that one. I yeah, love subtle. this game. Uh, so Final Fantasy VIII, uh, Karakhan has been getting, has been streaming this game pretty much every day as far as I know. He's been playing this endlessly uh, and religiously. And so he's gotten an 8.59.54, which means that he's beaten his previous world record or possibly world record, disclaimer here, by six seconds. So that's a nine-hour run being beaten by six seconds, which is wow. pretty impressive. Wow. Was it Congrats. actually? By six, oh. by six seconds was the breaking well, nine hours. Nine, yeah, the sub nine yeah. is by six seconds. Yeah, it's finally sub nine. So congrats to uh, Karakon. Yeah, that's 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 uh, pretty been, amazing because Karakar yeah. now is like top level on all of like the Final Fantasies after yeah. like six. That's weird. Like he has um, seven, eight, have, nine, and ten have, all pretty. Does he have times. nine? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That's what yeah. you mean. Um, I've also um, I've been told by my buddy Drazuk that supposedly if FFX Gamer, sorry, FF Gamer eighty six ever finishes a run, he will crush this time. But who knows? I that's all I've, oh. I've that's second hand. Second-hand knowledge. It might not be true. Uh, next up, our favorite f- PSX platformer, Frogger. He's back. Oh he's yes. Back. Both the any percent and the all gold frogs runs have been beaten. by Kane Apache, a 1651 in any percent by Kane Apache. This is cool because he beat SSBM stuff, and these two are yeah. really damn good at the PSX platformers. To see Apache and SSBM stuff both in the same game is pretty sweet. And the got- SSBM stuff's run had a death in it. Oh, did it? Yeah. Uh, and then uh, so. there's a 44-24 by uh, Kane Apache as well for all gold frogs. Uh, next up, uh, I believe, Feasel, have you played this game? What if is... not, it's Journey. I have not played uh, this game, uh, but I do enjoy looking at it. Weebles. So, speedrunning Journey is kind of like speedrunning Amnesia in that you're not supposed to freaking do it. You're yeah. just not. You're supposed to enjoy it. But... Um, screw enjoyment, we're speedrunners yeah. yeah, I haven't actually played the game but I've looked into it a lot, it's absolutely gorgeous, you pretty much just travel around and enjoy the sights and then do some platformy puzzle stuff, and what, you get this cool scarf, you? and it gives you more jumps, uh, New Game Plus I'm pretty sure you start with uh, full scarf length i.e. max jumps so you can pretty much just fly through the game, I believe is this still with the second player? Because I remember for a while someone was running it and talking about how the other player would get really confused by the fact that he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I just read Dram's comment, cape over everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, does anybody know how long this takes to play normally? Because um, my friend told me to and I can't be bothered to play it if it's more than like two hours long. I have, I have no, no idea. idea. I think it's about that. I All think right. it's around two hours, yeah. Hey, cool, two hours, perfect. I might actually play then. Oh, wait, no, this guy said four or so, shit. Yeah, one well, the other one says one and a half, yeah, so you're good. So, on average, that's still over two hours. Yeah, exactly. uh, and how long to beat dot com, <laughs> yeah. it's saying two hours and two minutes. Uh, oh. It's too long, man, it's too long. Yeah. How long to beat has been a great website for me recently because I saw a speedrun listed of Far Cry which said uh, Far Cry 3 was 8 hours. <laughs> and I was like, alright. And then somebody listed their first playthrough as like 7.5, so I'm not really too sure what's going on there. <laughs> I went to 7 Saga and it's 60 hours listed. <laughs> 60 hours. 60 hours. There was a guy as well. Standard playthrough, story missions only, of Borderlands 2. 174 hours was his standard. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? Like, that's incredible. This game is pretty. Yeah. Wow. Alright. <laughs> Sorry, 174 I hours is great. I know, man. I know. Uh, speaking of awesome, awesome games, Katamari Damasi. Oh, sorry, Damashi. 
Uh, PS2 US version, any percent 3304 by Grass. Oh, apparently the run was pretty bad. Uh, there's a notable bad parts listed, which I'm not sure if I want to read out or not, but uh, it was a new personal record by about 12 seconds. Uh, he just wanted to finish a run and go to bed, and he beat his PR, and he was probably not happy about it. But hey, Katamari games are amazing. So I'm glad to see it. Um, why is that on there? That should. How did. That get all the <laughs> How we old is Dude, I'm not even mentioning it. We're skipping it. We're, that's not... it's time to shine. Dude, it's a pal. Why is it on the list? <laughs> you didn't catch it and made it on. <laughs> that's going to happen. Well, there it is. Look at it and enjoy it. It shouldn't be there. Uh, well, the anyways. Sunday NTS sequence spray. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, Mighty Bomb Jack. Who wants to grab this? I'll um, talk about it. Yeah. Not that I know much about the game, other than uh, the fact that it's an NES game that looks like just the kind of game I would play. Um, let's see. We were we had our record for this last week, which unfortunately got lost in the shuffle. But we have some notes here, and he that spurred the runner on to improve it yet again. And he says uh, that this is an improvement of ten seconds over the run that he submitted last week, and the improvement comes from slight route optimizations and overall cleaner play. Well, that makes sense. The run entails warping from the royal room to royal room uh, from round one through sixteen, skipping the long adventure portions of each stage, then completing the final adventure portion and rescuing the king for the worst ending. I'm glad the only other all, time I've seen we all understand what that means. I mean, he hasn't mentioned anything sense. about picking up fruit, so I'm not sure that that's for the same video. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a really fun game. By that's the way. an interesting layout of ledges. It's level four. <laughs> So. Yeah, it's uh. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. No, this is cool. There's no subtext cool. there. Don't worry about it. Oh, I didn't even know that it was possible to speed run this game. Like I've played the arcade version quite a bit, actually. It's a really fun game, but there are like a whole lot of levels. I didn't know that there were any warps. It's pretty cool. So yeah, sure run. I mean, I guess there's an optimal path, and you just got to try and hit it. I know after a certain amount of time, you just get absolutely swarmed by enemies and hope that you can collect that item that turns them all into coins. Otherwise, you're screwed. I like these adventure portions of it where you actually have some... looks like a Legacy of the Wizard dungeon in a way, all these interconnected rooms and stuff. I'm just thinking of K2 watching this. It seems like his kind of thing. Yeah, it does seem like a K2 game. Yeah, probably not hard enough. True, yeah. Well, hey, Mighty Bomb Jack. Oh, this is totally not what I was expecting it to be. I'll be honest. I was expecting yeah. more Bomberman style. Nope, not at all. Oh, Jesus, everywhere. what was he doing? He just destroyed the pyramids. Well, you have the to have curse thing... of Belzebub. Has... <laughs> <laughs> Belzebub. It does say Belzebub. It does definitely say Belzebub. <laughs> Poor Belzebub. <laughs> well, great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're done. Um, oh, we got another video for Nimbus. Uh, did you anyone get around to playing this? Or no, is I this didn't. a really cool looking one where you it's fly a around? Really cool looking one, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yep. Duckfist was pretty keen on it, so we'll get him to try and talk and play the video at the same time. Oh, I haven't it's actually played it yet, but I enjoyed the highlight clip last time, so that's good. A good start. Go for it. Okay, so here's uh, Nimbus. I believe this is the same person that submitted it last time by Bony Grunt. And 22 yeah. minutes even. And that's the 80%. Got a little highlight clip here. And just oh. seems like a. I'm pretty sure it's a, just a Steam game with pretty simple controls. You just. Uh, there, there was something to do with wind, I think someone mentioned last time. And you just navigate yeah, through this terrain. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's, there's wind and it's sort there's of momentum based. And like yeah. one way passages and stuff. But yeah, it's. Okay. it's a lot of it seems to be like building up momentum by running into things. There's some puzzly aspects of it sometimes to solve the level. You have to, you know, move objects from one place to another and set up chains of events. And so it looks like it's got a whole variety of different, you know, kinds of gameplay you can do with a 2D steering side scroller game. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems but, um, like a really cool game to play, and it's, uh, you know, a nice little watch, too. 
I'm pretty sure it's on Steam. Uh, I seem to recall seeing it on Steam. Yeah, I think I we all just said it was like two ninety nine on Steam. Yeah, yeah. we all so, said it's probably on Steam, but I don't know if anyone's actually checked. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have confirmation from stats. And there we go. Bony Grunt is on PC and PSN, so that's oh, Nimbus. Nice. Oh, hey, look what's rolling through. Huh. Oh, here we go. Uh oh, is the raid train here? The the Franker's train is coming. Franker's train. Yeah. For a second pass. Yeah. <laughs> it's Welcome. so adorable, man. I think it's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm imagining a bunch of people in party hats, like, in a conga <laughs> yeah. line around from... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wearing those, like, big puffy, like, train conductor hats, or yeah. train driver hats that they wear in cartoons. Yeah. And, like, one of them at the front, pumping his fist, going, choo-choo, <laughs> and the rest of them just, like, chucking oh. back. <laughs> but, yes, that is, that is Nimbus, which... Oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, it looks like a really cool game. Um, yeah. Next up, Dark Fist, do you want to briefly mention Ninja Gaiden to the Dark Sword of... Yeah. Okay, so that <laughs> name is pretty long. Um, <laughs> whatever. So that's the Ninja Gaiden 2, uh, the Dark Sword of Chaos, meaning the NES version of the game that came out in 1990 in 13 minutes and 58 seconds. By myself, this is the sword-only category, which is more or less made up by Hoda Ruby, but it's a time by Hoda Ruby, so whatever. Um... It was it was listed along with the any percent uh, time, and another category that was kind of strange. On uh, it's that it's that uh, RTA wiki site, not the Nico. R okay, it's the Time Attack wiki site, not the Nico wiki oh, site. You know what I'm talking about? The, it was like two not of them. the wiki smiling site. Yeah, not the wiki smiling. It's the it's the other one. Um, and mm -hmm. it's, there was only one time for it. It was Hoda Ruby's time, and I'm pretty sure he didn't try at all because this beats it by like thirty seconds. Um, yeah. I, I literally just, I did a stream for like a three hour long stream, practiced it for two hours and did three runs. Two of them failed like two minutes in the last one got the record by 30 seconds. So it's just kind of a joke category. I thought it'd be harder. Like I wasn't quite sure what to expect until I ran through the entire game, but, um, there it is. It's not that great of a run. I'm pretty sure I can push down by another 30 seconds if I tried, but don't really want to. It's not that not, not that great. If I did anything sort of only wise, it'd be the actual like low percent category. So it's a slightly different categorization than low percent. Um, it's not that important. <laughs> okay, cool. Just one question: Do yeah. we leave the Franca's train? Do they go off on their own, or what? Do we do anything? I think we're I supposed know. to send them on. Yeah, but what happens if we lose all our viewers? True. Hmm. They'll get sucked in. Um, I think we train. send them on. So let's um. I think they want uh, to be guided. They they want to They want here. to be guided. Guide us, please. Um, hey, let's send them to Mike eighty nine. Yes, Mike eighty nine FDA. Go, <laughs> Frank is train through there. Frank <laughs> train Mike eighty nine FDA. There he is. And Arcana, Off you go, you might, guys. I want to repaste those links once the train's passed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, to the guy who asked. At the worst possible moment about what the show is. Yeah, uh, read the short that. description. Read the short description underneath the um, video. It's a speedrunning chat show. It's all explained there. So, Mike eighty nine SDA, have fun, Franker's train, and keep rolling. Don't take all our viewers with you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay. Where were we? Oh shit, Octodad. Okay. So how can you forget about Octodad? Um, you mean like how we forgot about it last week? And this isn't up to date. No, it's not up to date. Quick. Shit, what's the new thing? Adam, what's the new one? Adam, there's what a new one. What are you talking about? It was by Jorf. I don't know what the precise time is, though, but he beat Wait, S's Jorf time. Beat S? Yeah, yeah beat Jorf him. beat it last night. It was six minutes even. Jorf, and uh, six unless you even. discount the loading frames, and then it might be sub-six. Huh. Right. Well, six it is, then. Quick, change it. Adam. Uh, uh, Duckfist, quick, change it. <laughs> Honestly, both runs were so good. I couldn't believe they ever got it below 620. I thought that would stand. There we go. This and they're still aiming for sub-6 as well. Yeah. yeah. They're oh, well, still at it. Here we go. Yep. So when is the Octo Dead with scripts coming? <laughs> <laughs> the fridge script is it's, really complex. I think when S realizes that he won't be able to keep it, S likes to give up and do scripted runs of things. <laughs> look at whoa, look how quickly he opened that door. Yeah, that was a great yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, Octodad, uh, what was it, the fourth most popular game at the marathon? 
Um, third, well, maybe, even? maybe maybe third. Even. It, it was including only games where the view count went up. Whoa, what happened? Okay, there we go. I'm trying to fix your mistake. Come on, top shell. So it's it's alright, don't worry about it. Um, but say, everybody knows we love Octodad. It's the darling of the speedrunning community. Uh, we at TSSB will take absolute credit for its success at the marathon. It was all us. <laughs> and, um, I mean, look, look at this control, man. Jaw wow. Face. Wow. Great dishwasher. Dude, that wasn't even. That was planned, too. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, the floor. Jesus oh, Christ. <laughs> Yeah, so hang on, is this is this S's run or is this Jaw? Yeah, this is S's. Oh, oh this is S. Like, that is. Oh, so is this, this is a yes, This is H. This is so so terrible. The Imagine that counter clear is so good. <laughs> oh wait, that's such a good strat. You use the box. Use the box. Yes. Dude, that's so yep. clever. Who came up with that? <laughs> genius. Dude, who came up with that? Because that is amazing. That's some clever stuff. But um, it's your same Octodad stuff with some revised strategies. Juries. Yep, that's right. Strategy. Okay. Look at this the movement so smooth, man. This is good. Oh, oh, that's where the eight seconds went. Uh, oh, the oh, come on! You can't even <laughs> score. That kid's got nothing. <laughs> God. Yeah. They've what actually just father. recently switched to doing the kitchen first, deciding that the fridge and the counter stuff was just too difficult over the soccer goal. Wow. Um, whereas before they used to run this room first because the soccer goal was just so ridiculously hard. But yeah, Octodad. So, Johnson. Do we know if Cotty is still running this as well? I'm trying to advertise the guys, so go watch lots of S. Um, J F U G G E R G G E R Y, uh, also known as Jorf. Those two guys are going to be battling it out. You can't take a, a kooky game record from Jorf. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. He comes back with a vengeance. And lab 3D. Yeah, those guys are like <laughs> TSSB veterans. They've been on a few yeah. episodes, mentioned lots of times. So, um, yeah. And they're good sports because they keep improving the run so, like, by such a small margin. Mm. So we get to show it every week. Yeah. You don't want to just do your best and then have Octodad never show up again. Exactly. It's, so. it's your duty. So, Octodad. Amazing, as always. Uh, next up. Uh, on Paper Mario, so that's been getting a lot of attention recently. The Japanese version all cards run has been beaten. Uh, I ate your pay, uh, I ate your pie with a 30, uh, sorry. God damn it, this is really difficult. You can Five do minutes. it. Three it's hours, cool. 49 minutes and 39 seconds. Um, and it says all cards and any percent basically is no skips in that sense. Um, well, no major skips. I guess. That's, I mean, he tried to explain it here in this little thing, but it didn't work that well. Yeah, I think I think that's it. No major skips. It doesn't do that thing where you skip like chapters two through four. Yeah, the blue house jump. And um, Paper Mario, the yep. any percent Oxus three o one fifty one. He says he he noticed he only used four shooting stars on Bowser, and we all understand that. Right. No more explanation needed there. No more explanation. Wow. Speaking of Paper Mario games, Thousand Year Door, the GameCube Nintendo US version, any percent, 6 hours, 5 minutes, 35 seconds. So there was a new skip, whoa, there was a new skip found a few days ago that saves roughly 18 minutes. Wow. Uh, it requires getting Miss Mouse in your party, normally a side quest to recruit her, uh, and a large body of water. Hmm. I guess we'll... Uh, Huh. There's oh. actually a dad uh, explanation here that I will paste in the chat for those interested. Uh, YouTube video there. Oh, there you go. And yeah, uh, check, the, check the comments for that YouTube video, and it's got a whole explanation of what's going yeah. on. It says the glitch allows you to access the shortcut pipes to chapters five and six early, allowing for some sequence breaks. So cool, Leo. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing that in RPGs they're finding sequence breaks in them now. Yeah, they found uh, a bunch in, um, in. They're finding some in Final Fantasy X and that too. So yeah, I saw that. Yeah, some yeah. People yeah. ask me to look at the runner name. I don't understand. Oh yeah, and uh, Secret of Evermore. Just a little bit. We'll talk about that later. Oh yeah. For the, those of you, Oxus and Wazox are the same guy. And Unox. And Unox, also. Um, 
Uh, wow, another Paper Mario one. Okay, um, Adam, are you there? Yes, I am. You're going to talk about this game. Super Paper Mario. Yes. Uh, uh, it's Super Paper Mario for the Wii, and uh, Requi underscore did a, a, a any percent run of it in 4 hours and 36 minutes and 38 seconds. Oh, there's also a video, so you've got to talk for like, like two minutes. Okay, and we've got an awesome video of this game as well. Um, this game has an interesting gimmick because you can switch between 2D and 3D, and from the looks of it, you can just like hover in the air and do a second jump. Yeah, I think, I think it, there's something about trying to do this stomp at the same time that you switch views must be very important. Huh. I don't know uh, that's, why. But... That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, that probably allows you to skip all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's a bit like Fez, I guess, except fun. Where you can switch between these dimensions and uh, like the world changes around you and you have to solve puzzles this way. And this is still an RPG? And this is still an RPG, although the combat has, has changed quite considerably. So it's real-time combat now. It's no longer turn-based. You uh, jump on top of enemies to kill them. It's kind of you know, a mix between the traditional Super Mario Bros. gameplay and uh, an RPG, in a sense. So that's like, you do still, yeah, right. Yeah, you still level up and everything. You gain stats, increase your damage. I can't follow this at all. Yeah, <laughs> I had I have no idea what he's doing. Like I've played the game a couple of years ago, and it was really cool. And I recognise the areas, but that's pretty much it because he's just doing all kinds of fancy stuff. So it seems like a cool room. I'm going to check it out afterwards. This must be a routing nightmare. Not only is it an RPG, it's got all this weird other stuff going on. So hats off to this guy, Rec Fee, Was it? That's yep, uh, underscore. Yeah. Right, we underscore. So, I mean, I still don't really know what's going on. Oh, he's upside down <laughs> now, a, that's called. Cool. Yeah. It's a pretty neat game. I told Fiesel earlier, it's a, it's a really fun game, but for people who are expecting another entry in the Paper Mario series, it's a bit disappointing. Uh, it's completely. But on its own, yeah. it's a really great game. Well, it was called Super Paper Mario in their defense. Right, you're supposed to know it's not standard Paper Mario. Come yeah, on. I haven't seen them do any fighting yet. It just seems to be like a lot of horribly awkward corridors. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not it's Super skipping. Paper Mario as much as Super Paper Mario. Oh. Super Paper. Yeah, that Super Paper stuff's pretty crazy. Yeah. But, alas, I'm going to assume... Yeah, that is the end of it. Um, Portal, the Any% Now Our Bounds record got beaten again by Sully JHF. Was this uh, this taken back from somebody from last week, I believe, or improved on his own? Um, I thought he was the only one that... I thought we had two new guess. guys came out. Let me go check the database. Sully JHF had a 1506. Was there not one between? Oh, he improved and, his own one. There you go. Yeah. That's faster than you. Wait, hang on. And then there was one with Out of Bounds and 1023 by Spyronite. Yeah, that, okay, that's what I was getting got used with. So he says uh, it was an amazing run. It was 15, now uh, that's game time, so without loads. This was done in a race on SRL, which adds to the craziness of the run. The only mistake was at the beginning of Chapter 19, where he failed a peak vocal. Uh, he's going for a sub-1450 and optimally a 1445, and then he will be done with Portal, unless someone takes his run from him. Which is the way to go. The speedrunning retirement, that one is. Yep. So, um, Next up is Quake. Who wants to tackle Quake? Because I think we know less about Quake than Zelda games. True. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I just... sure played a lot, but I don't know anything about speedrunning it. I know that Cool King... Oh, you gotta know oh, wait, no, hang on, wait, wait, wait a minute. You. Let's throw him under the bus. Weedles. Yo, oh, there we go. Talk about Quake. Oh, that'll do oh man, a so this is a game which involves using your mouse and running around and shooting some stuff. You got a pretty elite time yep. on 80% easy. Um, there's a lot of bunny hopping and not fighting dudes, notably. Yeah. <laughs> Just give that guy a little love tap. <laughs> um, apparently rocket jumping is a thing. Bunny hopping is yeah. also a thing. And grenade jumping. And grenade jumping. Grenade boosting. And a cool kid being amazing at video games is also a thing. So cool I know kid is a monster yeah, at this. Really uh, yeah, I know Quake has a pretty large history at uh, SDA. So h how does this fit into the old uh, like SDA runs? Does this actually beat some of the original like Quake done quick stuff? Or uh, those were like segmented. Then I guess it must do. Right? This um, is they a were single heavily, segment record. Yeah, I think that's the main thing. It is is they were mostly not single segment. Yeah. 
But um, the Tolkien general was a long time is... Quake player. Oh like, yeah, he's he's definitely an old school Quake guy. Yeah. He didn't just pick this up. You can't just pick this up, like no. really. Like, you gotta do it. But oh, whoops, um, I seen it. yeah, Cool Kid likes to do the single segment stuff. And uh, the original runs were generally, like, the really good ones were all segmented, so. Mm-hmm. Cool Kid is just monstrous. I, I watched him. He's been working on this for a long time, too. Yeah. So. Fun fact about Quake, by the way. I, if I remember correctly, there were some kind of TES tools made available so that you could actually TES Quake. Oh, wow. And I do remember reading or hearing from Cool Kid that he was working on something. I'm not sure if he's still working on that as we speak, but might Expect to see some of that in the future as well. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty. I wonder cool. there have been a lot of new developments in it. I mean, it's a game that's had a speedrunning scene for a long time, and so you might think that a lot of the obvious stuff would have already been discovered. But yeah. I'll see I what wonder. a task would do to this game. <clears throat> have at least yeah. re records as frames, I would say. <laughs> but yeah, Cool Kid, absolute. As you may know. Our record section is even named after him. He's the big boy in chat, so if you like Quake games, go follow him. Um, if you're one of the hundreds of people who asked us about getting Quake at a marathon, all you got to go do, make his stream the biggest on Twitch, send him a bunch of money, and he might show up at one of the marathons. Yep. Um, so even yeah. if you don't like Quake or have never seen it, watch that run, because yeah. I have like, the least amount of experience with Quake yeah, Quake Ever. is one of those speedruns that it doesn't matter if you even know what the game is. You yeah, just go it's watch it. Mad impressive. Okay, another one. Um, actually, this is interestingly in here. So, Rage is a game made also by id Software, I believe, the makers of Quake. And this was something they released last year. Actually, I guess it was 2011 now, I believe. And it's always oh, it's got a long comment. Sure, cool. Well, it's, got, it's a pacemaking comment, but it's uh, it was 2011. It was released, and it's a, a story, a long story game. I thought it was pretty fun. A lot of people hated it. As far as I know, it has flying glitches because it's a FPS. But there is a little comment here, which I will get somebody else to read. Actually, no, screw. It. I'll, I'll read this one. You can do this. I got it. <clears throat> Uh, the fact that the stuttering Twitch recording of my previous run did not match the actual length of the run bothered me enough to just regularly record another run instead of stream. I'm glad I did this run, though, as it's over five minutes faster. It's a pretty good improvement. Here's some notes from my YouTube description. Timing starts at the first input after exiting stasis and ends upon pressing the last panel in the Capital Prime. Sorry, in Capital Prime. World record run at the time when I post this on the 26th of January, so la- oh, well, that's not last weekend. Like yesterday. I'm quite happy with how this run went. Other than some bad luck with the AI blocking my path a few times, there are actually very few known... Oh, oh, sorry. I missed a full stop. This is really difficult. Can I give up? No. No. Keep on going, dude. Okay. You can, like, no just going to save you. There are actually we very few you. known glitches and, and exploits in Rage that help in a speed run. The main advanced technique is to uh, that is used in this run is bunny hopping and strafe jumping. Surprise, surprise. Which is something it carried over from Quake 3. Strafe jump in the wasteland touch dirt areas, you sprint diagonally, tap jump, hold jump as you fall, then release, jump right before you land. <sighs> Money hops, good fun. The most concrete type areas require a different timing, where you press jump right as you land instead, and you cannot get quite as much speed. Big thanks to all the folks that worked on routing this game in SDA over in the Rage forum thread. Uh, then there's the, ty- uh, the timestamps that he made. There's a decent example of speed you can get from strafe jumping, uh, and there's another one that should be a- playing a about soon, or already played, I don't know. Uh, some good action bits using rockets. Um, I like the RC car stuff, too. Yeah, I haven't any of that as highlight. Oh, I thought he said there was. Yeah, it wasn't. It showed an RC bomb strat. Oh, dang. Okay, well, I thought this game was pretty cool. A lot of people hate it, but, I, you know, it's fun. I'm sure they will find, like, an out of bounds. It's, it's a three, you know, it's an FPS on PC. It's all good. Right. Next up. Oh, man. Ratchet and Clank. Ooh, that's a good time. So, a new game plus <laughs> any percent. 50 to 40. Like, that's really short for Ratchet. I believe that's game time, actually. Uh, um, I don't know. I saw him in the chat, so maybe he'll... Uh, pretty sure that's... He'll clarify. That's game time. But, um... New game plus is... Baby mode, you're right, buddy. There, I didn't want to tell you, but it, you're, you're, it's true. 
Uh, but I need a break from the regular any percent. This category is too manly. Uh, sorry, any percent is too manly for his baby-like body to handle. Anyway, leave my estimate of 55 minutes, even with some of the painful screw-ups. Run is definitely improvable. 50 minutes is possible. Still happy overall. Um, he's absolutely right. New Game Plus, Ratchet and Clank is baby. I'm glad to hear you say it. Before the fact I... that he admits it, though, makes it okay. Exactly, exactly. Um, Rhapsody, a musical adventure. Oh, I love this game, dude. Yeah, any percent easy. This is a nip on itch game, right? Um, I don't know. It's just yeah, it's typical. Yes. It's typical. It's yeah, it's yes, it's clearly yes. <laughs> yes. Um, it's a two thirty eight thirty five by Zaspat. I saw this uh, copies of this c- cooking around at the marathon, actually, which uh, is pretty rare to see. I've never even seen one before. I don't think it was released in Europe. But um, said the run had loads of luck. I've been trying to get trying to get for a month now, but I killed it by losing count of how many turns I took during the hard fight. Luckily, a new strat saved two minutes anyway and allowed me to bring the run back at the end. He's going for sub two thirty, which is going to be a pretty good in, uh, improvement. Um, is it particularly special? Is it a tactical RPG or? Um, it's it's a special RPG. Basically, there's more singing in the game than fighting. That's <laughs> That's all I should say about it. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, Duckfist, do you want to talk about this one quickly? Yeah, here we have another uh, Secret of Evermore run by Meta Sigma in 2 hours, 14 minutes, and 56 seconds. Now, <laughs> this game is just, it's going down every week. Like, he still hasn't found everything that he wants to do with this game. I mean, just constantly coming up with new, uh, interesting <laughs> tricks and skips. And uh, th- there's something else kind of on the on the horizon here um, that would only save a couple of minutes but it's just pretty ridiculous uh, uh, on the next uh, set of tricks that he's going to start integrating so he didn't really want me to spoil it so just uh, he, re- he wanted to get another run uh, I think like a, at keep, least a, keep your ear to the ground is what you're saying yeah yeah Follow exactly his channel better yeah. yeah yeah if anything just go watch his stream and see what he's up to I, I know he's, he wanted to get a 213xx for the show and actually get a highlight reel but until then um just kind of keep it on the download. You'll have to go to a stream to see uh, what's in the works. But it's really good stuff, so check out Metasigma. Cool, cool. Um, right, S3 and K. Adam. Yes. You've played a similar game. I've played Sonic games in the past, yes. Yes. Um, so Worcester and Mark 89, they've been co-oping Sonic 3 a lot in the, uh, the recent past. And uh, they've got a 3005 in the any percent category co-op and uh they say that this one was pretty good they had a couple of they had an unlucky death in the very last level so they could have actually gotten sub 30 but you know shit happens um they are planning to get sub 30 real soon because mike 89 and worst at co-op runs are going to come to an end sometime soon um so they're pretty active in, in running this game i think they actually had a sub 30 one a sub 30 run go in recently but then messed up again somewhere like they lost them they were a minute ahead of something but but lost the run so sub 30 is going to happen soon check out their channels i think they usually stream on worse this channel probably but it's uh, i think they actually stream fun. on mics normally yeah, oh, did they? Been streaming on mics, yeah. yeah we just okay, sent well, the franker's train over there so you can just follow the, the tracks yeah, follow the the tracks. Tracks. <laughs> so just check out their stream they are really amusing to watch yeah um if you haven't seen a sonic run before this is what it looks like Yep. Yeah, expect loads of zips. Yeah. Sonic games are pretty much awfully broken, every single one of them. Especially the co-op version, because uh, then there's all I kinds of deal weird tricks. Yeah. yeah, where you just look up and then like fly yeah. <laughs> into something and then you zip. Carry your partner out of bounds. Yeah. Done. Yeah, this, like pretty much every level has some kind of zip or some kind of messed up physics. And it's they... just basically down to whether it's worth doing or not. Yep. So this game is ridiculously broken. It's really cool to watch. If you like really broken games, then I can highly recommend it. And Mike89 and Worcester are just fantastic streamers. So you should check them out anyways. Yeah. And yes, they do do... Oh no, they, they're they brothers. They do the co-op like together, obviously, in person. But they yes. stream it. So Sorry, what were, you, what were you trying to say? <laughs> Dark Cobalt said, do they do co-op online? And I misinterpreted that as streaming it. And then I realized he meant, do they co-op online? I was like, no, they're they do it in person. No, I mean, you can't do this. You can't do this co-op online because it's just too precise. 
Right. You've got too tight uh, time winners for some of these tricks, so you can't just do this online. It's done in person. Okay, doke. Um, oh dear, I moved something. Oh no. Oh god. Ah. Uh, oh, this is hard. Oh, what have you done? I... You control Z. <laughs> control Z. Hey, oh god, what happened to this? Oh, thing? there you go, there you go. Oh, no, it's it's still broken. Star Fox 64. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Star Fox. Was that on the list? Wait, wait, wait. We've got the knowledge base, dude. We, we've got the knowledge base. Oh, no, it's, all, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Just ignore it. It's okay. Um, so the red line record got beaten by Zalad 1. The, uh... The, ah, wait, hang Oh, is that like you what happened to your mic? Oh. Help me, DJ. So hey, Zalard One got the red line record in Star Fox 64. I'm gonna let Flicky figure out where he put his microphone. Um, he got a 34-11. He's got a comment here that I'm gonna try and open up before it's too late. So Oxus had this record. Um, and Oxus has been improving it for the past several weeks. What? But Zalard took it from him. Uh, this is 27 seconds faster than Ox's run, and about a minute 24 faster than the run on SCA. Um. So he said it mostly comes from faster boss kills and better lag management, which is mostly just going into first person mode and uh like just scrolling the the laggy stuff off off the camera um so he thinks that sub thirty four is probably doable if you get real good luck on the star wolf in the area six boss, but um he doesn't like running this because it's real boring to speed run for him, so there you go. this you was go. just a revenge. Revenge record against Ox, maybe. Yeah, probably. I'll go with that. That sounds right. All right. Um, we had a video, but we we too quick, so we're gonna skip Did it. We? <laughs> Apparently, it's, it's red. So maybe a bunch that's of just... broken stuff I had to fix. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, that's fine. It's Don't worry good. about it. Um, good, Weebles. You can play it during the next one. Weebles. Do you want to talk about this next one? Uh, stealth bastard. Yeah. That one. Yeah. That one. Uh, I've never heard of it, but... Not a real game? Well, there's no comment or anything here, so you can just say it <laughs> as you want. Alright, well, it's not for any platform, apparently, according to the spreadsheet. No, the spreadsheet says PC. It does? Doesn't yeah. say that for me. It does okay. for me. Well, That's why you're the perfect one. <laughs> Alright. Well, it's for PC, 100%, and a god-awful 32 hours. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible, but... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, mad props for having the balls to do a 32 hour run well, it's not, no indeed you can't see that's a full stop that's a period not a colon yeah oh, <laughs> are you alright buddy like you're having a tough time you can't read this at all alright so this is <laughs> if only there is a way to zoom in <laughs> seconds or read well, I'm trying to watch Star Fox. I can't. I can't do this. Uh, by Newman and titles, yeah, they think this game is tactical bastard, and it's 32 hours long. You ruined our show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stealth bastard. Um, he made a highlight video, but we got to it too late. So hey, great. Um, Next up, Mario Bros. The Warpless record got beaten by one second by Andrew G. Uh, turns out Hotter Ruby was running Warpless. And he got a 1927. Then Andrew G got a 1926. He's been really beasting Super Mario Bros. recently. I think he actually nearly had a 457 run going. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but, like, he died at the very end or something. Yeah. Something so. Like like I mean, he's he's back in action basically, and we should expect to see a full fifty-seven sometime. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen for sure. So uh, Cosmic D had this for a bit. Hot Ruby took it. I'm not yawning. And then Andrew G took it back. I don't think Andrew G was even aware Hot Ruby was working on it. Yeah, no. Hot Ruby's time was announced after Andrew got this. Yeah. But I think Hot Ruby got it before Andrew got this. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But I mean, it's I mean, it's Andrew G holding B and running right and killing lots of stuff really well. Uh, he got the pipe jump in this, the um, the wall jump. Yeah, the yeah. I guess that's technically what it is off a pipe. I've been told he got that. So anybody yeah. who goes for that in Warpless, 
That's pretty ridiculous. I'm going to assume Hotter Ruby did too, because that's the kind of thing he'd probably try as well. Yeah, <laughs> possibly. Yep. It only saves a few seconds, doesn't it? Like two seconds? Three seconds? Yeah, but I mean, the level... The level of yeah. this game is just ridiculously right. high at the moment. Yeah, Warbless never really got a whole lot of love compared to any percent, but no. it's happening now. Finally. Yeah. Which is cool, because I like watching this a lot better than any percent. Yeah, I like Yeah, any percent is pretty boring to me. It helps me out, because um, I was always convinced those were trees when I played, well, I played Mario Land, and they looked a lot like trees. But then in Mario World, they're mushrooms. So... I'm glad to have my uh, faith restored that they are actually <laughs> trees. Makes a lot more sense than giant mushrooms, I would say. I don't know, it is Mario. <laughs> yeah, it's still. mesmerizing to watch. I'm not even seeing these stages before. Whoa, whoa, whoa the, the fish are in this the game? Cheap cheeps. Yeah. Cheap cheeps. Yeah. Cheap cheeps in this game. Wow. I, I wonder if Cosmic D is going to come back to this game as well, because he recently beat the uh, Warbless record. I think he had yeah. a... I forgot the time. I think it was in 1939 or something. Something like 1939. We'll see if he does. I mean, he worked on it. Um, He could definitely give it a go. Yeah. It would be cool to see some competition in this again. I mean, if Hotorubi and Andrew G are running this, then, you know, having a third competitor, the more the merrier. I love those perfect jumps over the pipes and the plants. Yeah. Yeah. I love how every time he gets. Every time he does this run and posts it on YouTube, the first comment is always, this run is cheated, look at those jumps yeah. over the brown lands. It has yeah. been like, for the last fail. Like, five years, dude. Yeah. Every time. I'm just waiting for the pipe jump, and then I'll, I'll let us skip. It's three levels away. It's in there. Well, it's... We're not watching the entire run, you know. No. Oh, <laughs> there you go, it's not in there. But hey, whatever. Um, right, next up, can you briefly talk about this game, Adam. Briefly. It's, briefly as it's, possible. Yeah. it's one of the greatest games ever. Toki going apes pitch. This just went completely <laughs> viral. Oh, it's a 5707, by the way. Uh, this game completely went viral during AGDQ, yeah. and since then, like... Wait, are you sure? Yeah, it's, it's a 5707. No, 5407 even. 5407. Yeah. You're just making stuff up. This yeah, doesn't you're even lying exist. to us. <laughs> but this isn't even a, a game. It's a really good run, but they're still... Like loads of room for improvement. Um, and Shrimp has been absolutely beasting this game. He's been finding a lot of routes and tricks in this game, and uh, um, I think it's going to go down to sub fifty sometime soon. That's his target as well, I guess. Mm. Um, he's really good at, this, uh, good at this game. It's an awesome game. More people should play it. It's literally the most boring game in the history of video games. PJ doesn't know anything about this game. Any just, game just... where you this is your normal walk speed. Oh, and I should emphasize that this is played on hardest, which is when you play this game for the first time on hardest, don't even expect to get halfway through. Even if you set everything to max lives and max continues and everything, you will not make it very far because this game is just horribly unforgiving and cheap in 90% of the levels. So yeah, for those of you who don't know, Toki had a backstage thing going at AGDQ. A lot of people playing Toki. A lot of people playing Toki. All two copies of Toki that are in existence were at the marathon. I yes, brought three actually. Oh, the whole time. sorry. Well, we had three, but one of them was broken. So I guess yeah, two. two. Technically, yeah, um, the only time Toki wasn't being played was when Yama fell asleep instead of playing his game. That was during a race. Yeah. So <laughs> I was racing Mike <laughs> in Toki. The game uh, it was, was so exciting that his the main the main uh, <laughs> organizer for this game fell asleep instead of playing it. It's... Like he fell asleep for half an hour and he was still ahead. <laughs> so that's how racing this game works usually. But the that's times great. have gone down from four hours to an hour two to one and a half hours, one hour sixteen, and now it's. I had a sub one hour run, but then Shrimp just crushed it and got fifty four oh seven now, which is a really good time. But we can still massively improve if we somehow manage to avoid all the bullshit death that this game just throws at you. Oh, this is such a good level. Swimming. I love the swimming animation. This, yeah, this... yeah, this is the only level with a different theme, different music. Apart from this stage, you get the same music in the entire game. And it's like a 10-second theme that just keeps playing over and over again as you keep dying over and over again. Oh, he didn't get away from the mind game fish. 
So there's a couple of enemies in uh, a lot of these stages that are hardly avoidable. Sometimes you actually truly need luck to be able to avoid them. I think this is also one of the few games where you can die 20 times in a speedrun and it's still pretty good. Simply because you haven't used a credit. Huh. So anybody who can beat this game on one credit is part of the Toki Elite. Toki Elite, a very um, fun club, I guess. Yeah, be everybody prestigious. wants to be in. All right, prestige. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Wow, shut what down. Better ending. That is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, can we finish off the rest of the show? Is that cool? Finish it off with Toki. Toki. Yeah. Right. Toki's um, so good, though. It, yeah, it's special. It's special. So, Bo, Tony Hawk's uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 record got uh, improved again. I believe this is 7 seconds quicker than it was last week. Although I might be wrong. Or is it 9? But it's a 552 by Remedy. Uh, apparently sev- uh, sub 6 is fucking sexy. And there were 7 seconds of actual mistake. And the rest of the time save goes to optimize movement and new strats. I'd love to see them drive that down. Seeing two guys do uh, crush that game. Hopefully. Um... Should be cool. And my favorite news of in ages, because I love this run, George improved his Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 run. He's got a 407 now, which is. Wow. I've got to do the maths. 18 seconds quicker. Dude, how? <laughs> yeah, um, new routes. It must be new routes. Because um, he says sub 4 is humanly possible and he bailed three times. So there must be uh, new routes. So, yeah. I'm excited to see it. Unfortunately, there's no video, which is heart wrenching. But you know, that's regrettable. George, if you're there, you gotta you gotta do it for me, man. Um, yeah, it, yeah. If you guys haven't seen the first run of this, it's, yeah, it's, it's probably one of the best speedruns ever. I I always say, anytime anyone asks me what my favorite run is, I link to them that. Oh, he deleted the video because it wasn't worthy. Well, George, you've got to get it back up there, otherwise I don't have anything to link anybody. <laughs> don't make me link them Nez's Tony Hawk's 2 run with no stuff. Yeah. Come on, man. Uh, so, yeah, unfortunately you can't get a link. That monster, George. <laughs> uh, uh, George standards are insane. Um, yeah. Tony, uh, Tony Hawk's 3? No, Toy Story 3. The PC, apparently. An any percent in 10907 by Passive bob Um... He says he can improve it by a bunch. Uh, it says to show a glitch for a few seconds. Can we do that or not? Sure. Uh, what no. Showing? No, no, we can't. We'll do it next week. <laughs> improve your time, and then we'll do it. Sorry, buddy. And then Ease Origins got beaten again. An any percent Unica run in That's two. Yeah, at 224.33 by General Beatrix. Is that ours? It is, yep. Changed the route site slightly, did a boot skip to save time later in the game. Got lucky with some fights and much better overall bosses. Lost time on the final boss because his pattern is dumb as fuck. And he was out of hittable range for a good 15 seconds. Classic final boss. You know, you get there and he's just unhittable for a bunch. So, um, That's all the records we had this week. Um, we did a pretty decent job, I would say, there. Yeah. Um, Still within the split times. What are we going to yeah, do with this that. extra half an hour? Well, we're going to finish early so I can get some sleep. Sounds uh-huh. dumb. That's a perfect idea, I would say. I think we can um, go back to Amnesia. No. We could do another game of the week. No, it's fine. Um, another game of the week. We have, <laughs> to say, we have to say two things. First of all, thank you very much to Arcano, who has been taking Tompa's posty job today. And also earn his 50 cents by updating the whole TSSB link database from last week. Is he going to be doing that for a while now? or? Yeah, as long as he wants to do it. Uh, okay, so as as he keeps offering another then. week. I'll look forward to Thank it. You. Good stuff. That's a good um, example of, yeah, if of you how do. you can, uh, you yeah. can help us out. And there's all kinds of different uh, things you can help with. But another person who helped us uh, this week was uh, Doika, who gave us a bunch of Paper Mario records, some information about them, and, uh, and various things. So if you're an expert at a, a whole a whole series of games and you know you, you want to contribute your expertise, let us know what's going on in that scene during the week. Zelda. Mm-hmm. Can do that too. 
Huh? Yeah, exactly. Um, also, major thanks to Chronikies, who's helped us with a cool new Congratio little thing. Um, are we ready to tell people to use Congratio over PMing us now? Is, are we happy with it? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can still yeah. you can still PM us if yeah. you want, but if you don't want your classes. record on Congratio for whatever reason, you can PM us. But Congratio, Chronicles, Chronicles made us a real nice little flash. Um, basically, automates the record process for us, so we can just copy paste it right into our document instead, which we then go over to make sure it's all good. So go check out Congratio. Um, and obviously, I'm about to paste much, it in. Yeah. Oh, it's already in there. Yeah. Much love. You can to, submit stuff with that. Yeah, much love to Chronikies. Uh, I'll keep track of your PRs and every uh, PBs and all of that. Also PRs, I guess. And as you can see, we're there on the front page for the TSSB podcast. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So oh, one, one thing oh. to point out though is you're you're going to be like 99 times more likely to get your run made into a highlight if you upload it to YouTube. Yes, that yeah. too. Uh, and you'll be a hundred percent likely. Well, ninety nine percent likely to get your run on the show if you actually make the whole video for us. Right, yeah. make the video for us, best thing. And Giving us timestamps is the next best thing. Yep. Putting yep. it on YouTube, obviously, that's for sure. Yep. Um, but get into the habit of putting it on YouTube because it could be very soon in the future where we stop taking Twitch highlights because they're just that much more annoying to work with. Right. We can always we'll always still link to, you know, if you want yeah. to have a link, you know, Absolutely, we can give yeah. so that other people can link to it, you know. Yeah. But you you can use whatever, but um, if you want ma- us to make a highlight reel, YouTube's the way to go. Yeah, I mean, okay. We can oh. we we can't straight up download Twitch highlights at all anymore. The way that they changed it. I mean, no, I can play can't. some stuff out of the browser, but it can't be every every game. I mean, it's just a lot of extra resources there. But definitely go for the YouTube route if you can. Yeah. Okay, Coke. Um, um, another ooh. another thing, real quick. Oh, man, we got more stuff. Yeah. Just a side note. Oh. Um, keeping with the Congrazio thing. When you report something as a world record, try and do at least some research first. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a problem this week, but last week we had like 50 to 60 records, quote records, that we had to get rid of because they weren't even close. Yeah. So um, if your run is 40 minutes short from the record, please don't report it as a record because that just wastes more time. Um, the other thing with it, if. I mean, I I know a lot of people like want to get on the show, get their work showed off, and that's great. But if um if you know a chunk of time can come off your run, maybe save it and don't submit it. I'd like to shout out to LL Cool Dave who is refusing to tell us his times until he's actually done. So thanks to him, he's working on Duke Nukem 3D. If you want to go check that out, I've been assured by several people that it's amazing. But, yeah, it's all good. Can we do the wrap-up? Is that good for wrap-up? Because I don't think That's there's any I news. sing the song, and <laughs> uh, we have yeah. a slideshow. We'll, yeah. we'll play the intro again, and then we'll Beatles figure out who we're going to show his holiday snaps. Dude, the yeah. Sunday Sequence Break Barbershop Quartet Acapella. So, yes, please follow at TSS Break on Twitter. Um, we got, mm, actually, we might have had Twitter highlights marked hash shit but I haven't seen any <laughs> um, so Adam and Adam yeah Adam do your shout outs if you have any uh, my shout outs um, shout outs to uh, Garrison for keeping me or for completely ruining my sleep schedule over the past couple of days I've been watching his stream until like 6 in the morning every day um, shout outs to Mr. Weebles for being an awesome Asia runner and just shout outs to the TSSB crew oh. for having this awesome show Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Our pleasure. Weebles? Uh, Shout-outs to the other Amnesia runners who have been like doing wonky-ass like 50 tinderbox races with me. Uh, LaFoke, Jaddy. Uh, who else is getting into it? Techie's picking it up. Um, whoever else, I don't know. Uh, just come by the stream and say hi. But yeah.
What's Call even it? happening right now? Is, we, you is guys never there a show up? going on? Did we sure, we're still do Are you still live while we're talking like this? Yeah, man, you never wrapped up. Sorry. Dude, you can't just do that. We clearly <laughs> wrapped up. PJ said we'll play the outro. <laughs> yeah, I, I queued up. Well, <laughs> Let's find the worst stream on here and we're raiding them. <laughs> oh, no, screw it. Hey. Save Hold who on, you're, you're going to raid Go first, and then we'll wrap it up. No one said thanks for watching. Shout-outs from me and you guys. You know, something like that. Hold on, I'm about to... Hold on, I've got to tweet this, guys. Oh, my God. Highlight moment.